Welcome to the Dragon Ball Entries, a Starfinder podcast. I need to make sure that the mics are working. If people can hear me, then do a double check for that. Because it's been one hell of an afternoon. That should be absolutely fine. Not as you see there. Uh, anybody who might be listening, please double check the sound for us. Last week, I fucked it up. My wife was all like, yo, it's too loud. And I was like, nah, it's fine. She was right. It was too loud. She, she was right. Yeah. Um, Happened before though, where she was just like, She's always right. She's, she's, she's always no, right. I'll let her have this one because it's our anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am, hanging out with all my friends. <laughs> but we're back for episode 34 of Starfinder. I'm joined as always by all of my lovely friends here around the table. But I'm going to hand over first of all to Steph. Can I have my TJ mini as well? Uh, holiday TJ, please. Can I help? <laughs> OMG, you guys. Oh, so, um, I've been like totes inspired recently by like my hashtag bestie at Soulfire, um, because she's like totes and mazeballs, and oh my gap, you guys. She has just like totally got onto like the latest amazeballs trend. You would not even believe, let me tell you. So, I have this like super cute totes exclusive Warrior Prince 3D print of a husband. but not like this because this is an exclusive and it's just mine um but you can get stuff like him and all sorts of other high quality 3d prints from double double and use the super high exclusive permanent code to the stars for 10 percent off of all your orders <laughs> financially responsible and anyway, <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> it's such a bizarre filming! Don't you ruin everything! It's fine, guys, it's all so good. So you can use that code to the start to get your 10% off. Keep your guys laughing. Or you can slide into his DMs at Warrior Prince 3D on Instagram, even though it's not a cool platform to be on anymore. Everyone knows Instagram is where it's at. tonight of my lovely, lovely friends uh, as we are getting ready to jump into uh, another episode. We've got a few more announcements to get through, but I figured now's the time to say hi. And just, again, I'm going to ask chat while we're doing the announcements, just keep an eye on um, sound for us. If it's too loud in terms of the music, just let me know. I'll try and um, keep an eye on chat and whatnot tonight and go from there. If not, if anybody is in chat, just let me know and I'll go from there. Uh, I guess we've got to the next announcement. James, over to you. So... If I just nearly fell back into my chair. <laughs> really well tonight. Roll for dead. Um, if you guys have Amazon Prime, uh, you can get a free Twitch sub, which you can use to support and help the channel grow. It costs you absolutely nothing other than your already existing Amazon Prime membership. Yeah. A little freebie you can throw our way. All you have to do is sign up to Amazon Prime Gaming. Yeah. And it's that's just part of it. You just need to make sure you activate that, and then you can go to the website, go to About, and then you click on the. Uh, subscribe with Twitch. Yeah. Uh, with Prime. And it's done. Uh, Twitch in. Uh, thank you, James, for that one there. Uh, Alex, where can people get merch from? <laughs> www.dragonbornindustries.com and you can get things like the Dragon Ball Industries hoodie, you can get things like the awesome Dining Tech Industries thermal mugs, mine's down in the house, so I will get a drink in a little bit. Thermal we'll mugs! Let's play hot and cold for those who have got them. Uh, cold. 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 Nobody else has got them today? Not today. Not today. Mm. Mine would have hot in it. I had coffee in mine, but um, mm. tis no longer here in this room. Uh, also, please go check out Roll and Play Press, where you can get 10% off your books with code DRAGONBORN10. Uh, just go to the website, put things in your basket. When you go to check out, use that code and you'll get 10% off. Tamsin. Hello. We're going to pick a page out of the Roll and Play Press Obviously book. this page. Because hey. I like that. No. I'm not credit stick worthy because we're not in the no, game yet. No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not fishing. Up to 109. <laughs> Pick a number. Uh, 42. 42, meaning of life. Okay. 
Let's go for that one there. Ooh. Bars and Dives. This is one of my favorite pages in all of these books because it gives you so much to go with. So, Bars and Dives. Uh, this one is from the uh, sci-fi, I believe. It's got stars over it, yeah. This one's from the Game Master sci-fi toolkit. Uh, Jack, mm -hmm. let's get a bar name. A D12, please. D12. Alrighty. That is a six. A six. Lost Soul Sanctuary. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, Emily, welcome back to the table. Could I get the barkeep as a D12, please? Oh, I'm not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, please, I can get you guys to get your um, dice out. What's a 12? Shit diamond. I oh, know that's the... <laughs> Shit diamond's a D10. D10, yeah. <laughs> I, I, sorry. 11. 11! Part-time medical student. That's not bad for a barkeep. Mm. Um, I remember that moment when it was just like, you were looking through and like, it was like, Shit diamond, mate. Yeah, yeah, got it. <laughs> that was a while ago. Yeah, but that was yeah. an eight. An eight's a shit diamond, isn't it? No, an eight's, yeah. a, eight's a nice diamond. A good diamond. D10's like a shit diamond. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the D10. Uh, and then, for regular entertainment, James, I'm going to come to you with a D10, please. Shit diamond. <laughs> Four. Four? <gasps> Karaoke nights showcase a questionable mix of talent in front of an opinionated crowd. That's not bad. You get a whole bar right there. That's great. Karaoke nights. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Believe it or not, there is a karaoke bar on Absalom Station. There's a few. Well, of them. I guess there's somewhere we should go. At. <laughs> it's almost as if someone's go. prepared for that in profession. <laughs> I'm just going to accidentally blow myself out of the air. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Some karaoke? Space karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> you get so, yeah. arrested. <laughs> Isn't there a song for this? Uh, so thank you very much to uh, Roland Hill Press. Please go check them out. Use that code. Also, thank you to Loki Scary. Battle Maps, who I got a little package from them in the past few days. Uh, mm -hmm. On top of the stuff they'd already sent out, and I'm going to put a little reel and sense of sap, some stuff out onto the social medias, onto Instagram and stuff, because I got some festive stuff in. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Festive. festive as in Halloween? No. As in, like, I genuinely, I'm, I'm totally sure I'm here and now. Um, it's true. No. I, I, like like it. you. <laughs> I didn't know this was turning up. And I'm going to do a full video on it and stuff like that. There are seasonal gift cards, that, well, yeah. actual like cards, which are like completely blank on the inside, so you can like customize them as you see fit on any occasion with envelopes. Dungeon map gift wrap. Ooh. So genuinely. That's actually quite cool. A map. Can you on the other side. Use it as oh a... no! Yeah. Oh, wow. Like a one inch grid on it and stuff. I wouldn't have wasted that on a present. I'd love it. You get six of them. But not only that, much. that comes with a load of QR codes that you can use to digitally own that app so you can then print it off yourself. So okay. you get the gift wrap that's double sided and you get the QR code to have it as an actual map. And then I've got the 2025 calendar. Which, got, which again, all those usable maps mm. are on there. That's cool. And they come with a QR code that you can. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's the 2025 um, calendar, which I've probably got. Our new live shows on. Yeah. I'm not going to say more than that because we haven't sorted anything else yet. But starting in November, there is going to be a Dragon Ball Industries live show, which I need to mm. chat to some of you about. At first of every Friday, uh, first Friday of every month, first of every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> first yeah. of every single Friday. Which actually is going to bring me on something that Alex has got over there that I need him to keep track of in a minute. But, um, <laughs> Alex, keep track of things. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the spoiler that I'm going to bring out, that we are going to be doing some live shows and it's going to be a, a continuing thing and it's going to be a different campaign to this. It's going to be a D&D campaign. That's all we know for now. But that's going to be a happy Piranha in Troy. We're going to record it and stuff and everything mm. like that. Uh, Alex, yes. before I carry on with Loki Batmas, there's a red book in front of you there. There is. Every time somebody says something ridiculous like Bioluma Lemon, <laughs> feel free to... Mark down the date, who said it, and put it in there. Because I think this should have, should be a little book that we keep for like... Yeah. Thank you. I did have that up, I didn't want to ask. Yeah, just Go to like... In the campaign, we can collate them all. Exactly. Did uh, somebody say that? Yeah, yeah you said not to buy Luma Lemon last week. Yeah, yeah that was very funny, like, absolutely. By accident. Yep. And then I said purple the other day, <laughs> yeah. instead of purple, purple and black. Purple great. <laughs> uh, what was the other one with the pe peoples of pirates? That might be Pirates, 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 pirates of Pipal. Pirates of Pipal. So yeah. Alex is going to keep a lot. Do you want me to start from now, or do you want me to add? Uh, as you see fit to go from there. However, and then, I just want to keep that close. Look at that, we're also going to do our draw from the deck of many insults. So, Tamsin. Huh. I'd rather stick my head in a bag of devouring than rely on you for anything remotely important. Jesus. 
selling copies there so i believe like coming to regular uh flgs's and stuff soon uh obviously the 2025 calendars and stuff i'm gonna be doing a little video on it's probably just gonna be a little tiktok or something i'll get that up and going apart from that i think oh live show the yeah, actual live yeah. show that's mm. in like two weeks yeah. um we did some cosplay stuff yesterday got together and put made some costumes and stuff so if you're in cornwall on the 17th and 18th of August, so this month, um, please come check out the show at Power Pavilions. We've got Painting Up the Monster Manual on the Saturday, and then on the Sunday we've got Starfinder, where we're going to be on stage, under the lights, tables are booked. E. For what should be, what be fun? the next part of the story from wherever we end up after next week's session. Mm. Uh, to which end then, I guess there's nothing else to do but to jump into tonight's episode of Starfinder. E. much in the way of danger and curiosities. However, after pushing through the previous 24 hours, they encounter a grim garden of horror and the hive-minded carnivor carnivorous plants that seem to have food willingly walk into their home. A dangerous combat ensues and the crew have to contemplate whether or not they must run, potentially leaving members of the party that have been paralyzed behind. But luckily, the mother plant is destroyed and the linked younger saplings are destroyed in the process. The crew, in this moment of desperation, begin to set up camp and keep watch to get some rest, but also to switch off their environmental protections for some of their armor that now begins to run low. During the night, once Kaz and Bruce finish their watch, Skelkin and Calix take their watch. Everything seems to go fine, and just as they go to wake up Ida, Skelkin, with a high perception check that you made at the end of the last one, he turns sharply. What's that? And I will give you all another active perception check. So, Calix, Skelkin, and Eda. Is this a visibility over 60 feet? Uh, from where you are, no. So, it's within the 60 feet, but it is very dark in here. Eda. 16. 16. Calix. 19. 19. Skelkin. 24. 
scope can you see at first? Um, I just want some particular music. Because I think let's let's get the setting just right for this one. Oh, God, oh there's no. another worm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Going to eat your food again. <laughs> you keep pooping. <laughs> so. Skull, can you see it first? This <laughs> nightmare of a serpent emerging from the depths of a shadowy jungle. Mm -mm. Its approach is heralded by an eerie silence. And that's what has caught your attention. And it's settled over this dense area of jungle. This creature, an abomination of twisted entropy and shadow, moves with a fluid almost mesmerizing grace. Its serpentine body, impossibly long and constantly shifting, seems to be composed of swirling, chaotic blend of darkness and writhing tendrils that never remain in one shape for more than a heartbeat. It begins to enter through this seed shape entrance where you guys are camped at inside this den of vines, this large natural cavernous space. Right, so that's our only way out. You would have known last time as well that there was another entrance, but it is a good 120 foot away in the other direction. However, its face is the stuff of pure horror, gaunt and humanoid. It's an unsettling skeletal visage with these hollowing eyes that glow with a faint sticky, sticky, sickly, <laughs> faint sickly luminescence, devoid of any warmth or humanity. The skin, if it is skin, is stretched thin over its skull with a mouth that curves up into an unnatural, malevolent grin upon seeing you. And it reveals rows of sharp, needle-like teeth. As it slithers into the stillness of the jungle den where our crew, you rest, the temperature drops, and the very air thickening with a palpable sense of dread. The shadows it casts dance unnaturally, merging with the darkness of the surrounding, eerily quiet area. The serpent's movement is silent. A whisper of darkness gliding over the ground. Its presence exudes a sense of ancient malevolence. A creature born from primordial chaos. It sees the three of you as you are about to change over. And it locks, but just for a moment, these glowing eyes upon you all. And it's very frightening. To, to see this creature, this silent entity. Could you all make me, those uh, three of you, sorry, a will saving throw, please? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. You know. 17. 17. 23. What's Will? Saving. Yeah. Skeleton. Okay. 13. Okay. As it comes in, it doesn't approach in your direction. It seems to be begin slithering around the den. The end of this serpent still not yet visible. As it glides across the ground, 40 foot, 60 foot, 100 foot, until it reaches where you entered. The end still not visible. You two watch in horror as it doesn't seem to be coming towards you, but it's just frightening. Skelkin, you fall asleep. Um, oh you watch as Skelkin is like the one who's like, what's that? And then as it slithers in and like its eyes make contact, she just slumps to the ground. You can tell she's breathing, mm -hmm. but it's definitely asleep. Is there anything you do in this moment? I honestly think I'm fairly frozen in fear. I wouldn't go to keep like dead eye contact with it. I'm not looking yeah. away, but I am just pretty petrified, so I'm gonna just okay. freeze up a little. It reaches the other side where this entrance where you guys came into this den, and then it begins to carry on coming round. Almost like encircling you but like it's not staring at you the entire time it's only this one time that it stared at you and then it re gets to where the rest of its body is still coming in and then it goes up and begins to quicker and quicker go up and around the walls until 
the entrance is now completely covered, and the walls, once this living vine, are now rife with pure entropy and shadow. Skelka, what would be a nightmare for you? I'd say pretty much what we're living now is horrendous. Um, probably going back to Absalom Station and finding my family had been taken by Dynatech. That's like my fear. Okay. During the night, you have this never ending dream. You're not sure, you don't know it's dream. You, for you, it's completely real. You are coming back from this mission, you go to Absalom and just. Maybe the Starfinders can't protect you. Maybe whatever's coming is not avoidable and you see your parents, your grandma, D, all being held in a cell as you are being, they're being used as leverage against you. And it's almost like the room just makes this tinnitus like noise as you can see these Dynatech officials that you've already met, all of them, and then more behind them, taller and more imposing than they've ever been, talking to you and trying to get you to sign contracts and sign off on footage that's not quite true. And no matter what you do, you have to keep reliving this again and again and again. The rest of you that are asleep, TJ, mm, I know. <laughs> what would your nightmares be? I think for TJ, I think for TJ it's silence. I think he replays walking into his little Hestoki home after coming back from the drift for the first time and just the oppressive silence and the feelings of absolute loneliness and otherness. We watch as the ship lands, silent. No engine thrown, no footsteps as TJ leaves the ship, makes their way on a transport back to the Stokey housing block that you've all seen them go into. The door, you use your handprint, and what normally is a loud just silent again. This buzzing in your ears, the corridors are still blood, <laughs> every one of them drips with tendons, and it's like it's coming out of the ceiling itself, like somebody tried to use tissue as a sieve. Climb the tubes, looking at the apartment numbers, protein recyclers are all off, the power's off, there's no light. Your Stoky low light vision. You're just, well, it should be noises, but it's just texture. You get to your apartment and the door is open. It's clean on the inside. Empty of anything you've ever had. Empty of Linda. There are no, there's nothing on the screens. There's no food in the fridge. You look around like you belong here, but you feel like you don't. You go to look at the little flower that you left in the pot. And there's just like, the, just a shadow of it. Like maybe like where the dust settled around it. Kaz, what'd your nightmare be? I think Kaz's nightmare would be... Uh, eternal blackness, but every now and then sort of intermittent images of being tortured and not knowing what day it is, what time it is, uh, images of what I thought was cold water being splashed on me to wake me up, but was in fact acid. Um, and then next image is someone pulling at what once was my wings and uh, just absolute agony. Your night is pain, pain that you know and you've been through 
a thousand times in your dreams, but this time it's like you're reliving that very moment again and again and again. Every time you open your eyes, like you're waking up from a dream, a bag is pulled from your head to whatever device is next, the drill to the eye, the acid to the face, to being chained up and having just these mechanical claws cruise down at your wings from the back as the knee pulls into, or pulls up the like wings as the knee presses into your spine and they're just, you feel those tendons, those last joints just dislodge and are pulled from your shoulder blades. You scream, nothing comes out. Bruce. I've already had plenty of nightmares on this <laughs> <evening. laughs> um, so, so A different one. <laughs> yeah, another one. Probably the feeling that everybody I've ever sort of shown a bit of care for just losing each person to an uncaring universe and if anyone is responsible them not receiving justice. Mm. We see Bruce meditating in a field of stars in the endless galaxy, nebulas off in the distance as both gravity and photons flow towards him in this state of Solarian meditation. Whether this is in his own mind, a place where he goes to when he meditates, or a place that is somewhere he may have been or may not have been or maybe in the future you're just in the endless void of space as you contemplate it all but that loneliness that feeling that you haven't done enough weighs heavy inside you you go to open your eyes and you stand in a corridor of frost and despair you see on the wall next to you with your sword through them pinning them to the wall Dekar Pryor, you feel rage, justified rage, and you look left at the other wall where you see your ward, her head almost demolished, your hands covered in her blood, her hair. You look forward as you angrily, this isn't me. Maybe you think, and you move forward down this corridor and you come to a chamber where this chamber opens up into this field of stars again, but you are on a stone platform with that same stone chair in the middle. And you see yourself siphoning the life force out of people. You did this. You are to blame. The rest of you, Calyx, Ida, who are awake. In pure darkness, for the next 12 hours, you can't wake them. You can't stir them. Is there anything you would do? When you say we can't wake them or stir them, is that if we try to wake them or stir them, it doesn't work? Or is it that we literally physically can't do anything? Well, I mean, you tell me how, how you would. Like, you see Stealth can go down in the first instance. Yeah. How would you try and wake her? Knowing that she's asleep, how would you guys wake, try and wake Stealth up in that moment? I, so this thing's above us on the ceiling. No, it is now the room. Oh, it is yeah. the room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, probably just, like, cautiously moving over while, like, probably staring upwards. Uh, and just sort of like slowly creeping over to see if it moves or does anything and if it doesn't creeping over again I mean you, you guys are all together and yeah. then just like skulk just... okay. skulk breathing skulk. Mm. it's fine the temperature in here is a lot cooler yeah. but doesn't wake up I've just got my sword drawn just kind of keeping them behind me just watching it curl around, seeing if I can notice anything about it. Give me a perception check. Fifteen. Fifteen. The face. Now that it is everything in this darkness, it's the only thing you get to see every now and again, as it almost like pushes out of the darkness, these like dull, glowing, green, sickly, sunken eyes. 
and then balls back in and then it could be a minute it could be an hour between the next sighting of it but the walls themselves everything is like writhing shadows and entropy little flecks of red mm -hmm. and it is frightening this entire time but it never moves closer mm -hmm. it stays around the walls and it i mean 12 hours is a long time so mm -hmm. is there anything else you guys would do now apart from watch over your friends um I think the first thing I'd try to do is send a telepathic message. I, I think that's the next step. I'd be I telepathically message, because obviously they're, they're they're out. So, Mrs. Gilkin, hey, are you all right? Can you wake up? Maybe somewhere in your dream, you hear. A... <laughs> but it's just part of the dream. You don't know, like, you have no awareness that you're in a dream. But I think for us on the outside, that's what we. Yeah. Yeah. Eda. Yeah. Are they responding? No. They're, they're kind of out. I mean, everyone seems to be breathing and alive, but. They're, they're, like, wiggling, like, Do you know what like, this thing is? Um, you can give me a mysticism check. Anybody who's trained in mysticism. Oh, that is rough, buddy. Mm. Did we go on some journeys there? Oh, yeah. 11. Cool. 14. That's enough. I mean, she. you know that it's darkness, you know that it's entropy. You can tell that just from the feeling and i think you would know that these are the kind of things that do slip through mm. the tapestry <laughs> but what the actual being is you don't know well that was the next step is i'd like to ask it some questions while it's just hanging around us yeah um while that's happening can i just kind of see if it's cast like a spell onto skelkin by using detect magic you can absolutely cast detect magic if you've got the spot uh, spell, spell slot please mark it off um just a cantrip yeah. Um, there is a magical aura in play here, mm -hmm. and it is an aura. You can tell that it is within a certain field, which you are in, the whole room is in, mm -hmm. uh, there is a form of... Um, does it give you the score of magic? Uh, do, 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 detects all magic, spells, effects, item and objects, as well as hybrid items. You can't detect magical traps. Do, do, do. You can determine one magical source, if it's a magical item or other effect, and the caster's level of effect. You can't determine the magic source if you can't see it. Nope, doesn't say anything about class of. Okay, so magical source is clearly whatever this yeah. being is that's unendingly gone. Mm -hmm. um, and you think this aura would affect everybody, but you felt its presence and you managed to stave it off. Mm -hmm. uh, what were you doing, Calyx? I'd like to ask it some questions if it cares to answer back. You, um, what are you asking? Um, hello, Mr. Mr. Big Snake. Or, um, what's, um, could, could you let our friends go and, and, and let us go? Uh, we've, got, we've got a long way to go and, uh, just like, would like to, would like to leave, please. There's no answer. Okay, cool. So, from the dark tapestry, eh? <laughs> how does how's that? Is this, tele is this telepathic? <laughs> what do you need to do? No. Okay. No, no, I'm literally just <laughs> just talking into the dark. Making you are talk. hearing this. <laughs> and you're just like, is it working? Is this thing on? <laughs> As uh, I kind of like back up and slowly like try and use the back of my heel to move Skelkin to see if I can disturb them enough. <laughs> just kick Skelkin. Yeah, yeah, essentially just sliding my foot back. <laughs> it does not snake. answer. You almost hear this like light breathing, uh, but you don't know if that's in your head, you don't know if it's audible in the area around you. Um, but you know, an hour passes, no response. There's this aura in play constantly. Um, I mean, do you guys take a rest at any point? Because you're still not long rested from mm. before. 
You might as well join us, eh? <laughs> China. <laughs> is is it give, is it talking back? Um. I don't no, like this. Not really? Do, do you want to ask it anything? Scale can wake, wake up. Oh. Um, Mr. Mr. Big Snake. <laughs> what, while she does this, can I use? Like it's slow. I'm going to do comprehend languages at first level just to see if I can understand it talking back. Mark spells what I've missed. I have. Um, just a little snake. Um, just, just have you have you ever come across like an orb or something, like a, a big shiny orb or something? Oh, I think there's one over on the dark side of the tapestry. Just like you ever come across it? No response. Not a conversationalist. <laughs> I really want it. Now's to the like time to make fun of it, Caleb. <laughs> Now's not the time. <laughs> well, it hasn't done anything for like the last hour and a half. We're getting it. We're encroaching on like two hours, moving into three hours. Do we feel like energy drained or like? You feel frightened the entire time. Not yeah. like it's, it's the presence of this entropy, but you don't feel drained. Okay. Okay. Um, if I try and like use the back end of my foot to kind of like shove Skelton a bit to kind of just jolt them, any response? Nope. Oh, shit. I'll probably get kicked in my nightmare. Oh. You. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my emotions. Um, I mean, like, yeah, you give her a proper... Yeah, like, it's good, like back heel, not to kick her, just kind you, of shunt her a bit. You then get the sense that this is a magical mm. aura of sleep mm. that... Yeah. Um, four hours. Mm -hmm. Just out of interest, I'd like to just try um, Song of the Cosmos. Okay. So it's a magical spell. So Calix just after after like four hours just getting bored. Like still frightened, but like a level of like boredom is setting in as well. Just starts like trying to sing. Just like thinks of all the sort of knowledge he has of the dark tapestry. Uh, and it's like this sort of slightly eerie, weird singing that you don't think a grub could make. <laughs> um and, <laughs> <Just something hard. laughs> like that. And it, it's, it is like this weird sort of um, singing, uh, and I want it to make a will saving throw. Right back at you, big snake. <laughs> uh, it has spell resistance, uh, so what is your um, spellcaster level? Very big. I don't know what well, where are you? Uh, so your level um level four. Level four, so your spellcasting level four. Essentially, so it needs to be a DC fourteen check. Mm -hmm. It's um, a will seventeen. It still needs to beat that check first. So if it beats that check, your spell has no effect. Alright, cool. And then it gets to make the save. Cool. So uh, it needs to beat a fourteen first. Can it fail? Because so what spell resistance is, is essentially like going I'm a fucking spellcaster, you're so casting a spell at me, the level. fuck off. I think so, that's how it works. Okay. I'm going to double check it because... I'm the bad guy. Star of my universe. Imagine Calyx going, ha, this will wake him up. <laughs> yeah, 1d20 plus cast, 1d20 plus cast like the check, so it is a 14 with me. Uh, rolls a 10 on the dice. Okay. It succeeds. Plus 19. Um, mm -hmm. It succeeds. <laughs> <laughs> So it doesn't need to make that check. Oh, okay. Uh, unfortunately, spell resistance on certain things is crazy good. Um, but you sing this discordant song, and in this moment, either it's so weirdly eerie on top of it that this bug chirps and <laughs> makes this, like, dissonant notes. It's kind of, yeah, this weird, unearthly sort of sound. Um, but yeah, if that doesn't get its attention, then I think I'll just sort of like make sure I just keep patting all of the guys, making sure they're like comfortably sleeping. Oh, oh would I be asleep? So I've got, I'm just chilling with my orb. Does it even get me when I'm in orb state? Ooh, scary boy. <laughs> uh, and this is the thing is, you are now asleep. Yeah. Uh, because it's classed as technically, you know, four hours resting of doing nothing, and you drift off. Damn. Um, how much would a grenade weigh? Uh, 
Less well, than it, ten it, pounds. It says, it says one L, I think. Yeah. It says, so that's a, a light. So I mean, yeah, probably less than ten pounds. I'm just wondering if I can distract it by throwing a grenade using my psychic kinetic hand that can just kind of do it in the distance because mm -hmm. it doesn't say I've got to see where my hand is. Yeah. Five hours, by the way. Moving on to six hours. It must be moving on to long rest time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think so. <laughs> Okay, look, so I've got to move, but it's a little bit risky. I can. What are you thinking? I'm trying to go scare it, but it might threaten it at the same time, and I don't want to put everyone's life at risk if we can't wake them. I. It doesn't really seem that. I, I don't think we can scare this thing. It's, it's scaring quite... me. It's... <laughs> 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 it's, it's not fun. Oh, I'm really tired now, but. I. I... What are you planning? Well, I was going to see if I could make a noise in the distance and scare it, but I don't think it's going to work. Isn't it all around us? Yes. So that would just be a grenade inside around us? Has it completely like closed us off, like dome style? Yep. Oh, bollocks. So, so the actual size of the room that you were in has not changed. Okay. It has now become the wall okay. and everything. So you can still leave through the door? Ah, uh, you can't see the door, it's blocked. It is completely encased, this area. Mm. This never-ending serpent of entropy. What do you... Th what do you think it feels like? Seven hours. Well, I'm tempted to go give it a pat. <laughs> Let... I mean, do you Let want to grenade it? Not really, it hasn't really attacked us, it's just put them to sleep. But I don't know if it's just trying to wear us out. I think if it wanted to eat us, it could have done that. I mean, this thing's like big, it's like the size of a starship. So. Eight hours. If you want to touch it, I'll have your back. I'm gonna touch the back. He <laughs> touched the butt. Are you moving towards the edge and touching it? Just like, it's a Mr. Snake. I'm, I'm gonna give you a pat. It's not, a, not attacking. I just wanna, just wanna know. <laughs> you make me a will save. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Asleep. Oh, that's a Fourteen. Kaylex falls asleep. Ah. <laughs> Kaylex! <Kaylinks. laughs> this is destiny. There's a level of boredom as well as fear. <laughs> this touches on you, Eda. Sorry. Um, Touch the snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eda, you were the last one left. Everybody is asleep. Calyx, in this area, luckily, your environmental protections aren't needed <laughs> because the temperature is down. I have been keeping a track of how much you are, but before you went on watch, you have an hour left. I know that you were handing over armor, but I couldn't get access to your sheet at the time, so I will punch you guys if you wake up. I will then go back and do that, but I'm going to deal with this first. Anything as Calyx falls asleep as you move from hour eight into hour nine. I think I'm going to try and get Calyx closer to the camp. Yep, easily enough to do. Uh, they're very light, so you're very big. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to have you make a check for that. Thank God, because I'm min minus two in strength. <laughs> Are you? Um, <laughs> snap. <laughs> well, I mean, you still don't weigh that much. I'm not going yeah, yeah. to do that. Um, hour 10. You're I just alone. I mean, what would Eda be feeling it's... so alone in the dark? <laughs> His... I think he would very much just see things twitching out the corner of his eye, so it's kind of that's what's keeping him alert, the little flick of, like you said, like the stars or the eyes as it pops in and out. As he's kind of getting a bit comfortable, it just flicks into his eyes and that alertness. Because no. you're already fatigued, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Mm. The loneliness is kind of eating at him, you know. Yeah. He feels this sense of these guys have rescued him, but he can't let them down. Yeah. That sort of, that's what's keeping him going. We move into hour 11. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to see it uncoiling. 
as the first thing that happens is you see the face mm-hmm. that comes out every now and again just mm-hmm. back into the entropy and the shadow mm-hmm. as the wall starts to move again like this serpentine mm-hmm. and this head locks eyes with you for a moment it looks less sick mm-hmm. um, still horrifying mm-hmm. but the eyes glow with a slightly less sickly green as it then seems to like pass through itself mm-hmm. and you don't know now which way is which mm-hmm. the only possible way of knowing is the fact that your camp is not quite in the center of this area just off kilter yeah. yeah and eventually you're watching as this dark and cavern that was before that obviously blocked out all light from above anyway mm-hmm. you sort of uh, do you have low light vision uh, I've got dark vision. Dark vision. So you actually start to see the vines coming back in in places. There's these like holes and pockets appear mm-hmm. as this serpentine like being, this endless snake of shadow, mm-hmm. begins to dissipate out of one of the corners of the walls. And you watch as it seems to slither off. And it takes a few minutes for it to completely leave. Mm-hmm. Those of you asleep can mark a long rest. But you will take twelve points of twelve hit point damage after that. Hit point? Yes. Shit. <laughs> Including you. What's going on? You, however, mm-hmm. having stayed awake for the twelve hours, mm-hmm. must make me another uh, fortitude saving throw, please. Would rather not have taken a long rest. Um. But you do. The rest of you get rest, mm-hmm. and you know things like spell slots. Do you say will? Sorry. Will saving throw from you. Twenty one. So you pass, you are, no, you are still fatigued, mm-hmm. but you are no longer, you're not going to go into exhaustion or yeah, anything yeah. like that. You guys, uh, Skelkin, wake, wake up on this like viney floor like, I mean, how would Skelkin wake up? Would it be like from this night? Yeah. Would it be like? <laughs> Sit up, bolt upright. Yeah. And like you're face down. So you Attack have to like. Attack mode, like <laughs> go from the gun. Yeah. As you wake up like from this never ending cycle of a nightmare. Calix, what would your nightmare have been? Oh no, we passed that. I'm not no, going to no, tell you. No, no, I would like to know. No, 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 we passed that. I'm not going to tell you. Mm. That can be for another time. Calix, you watch your entire family. <laughs> Eddie, you tell me, or else I'm going to make something up. Uh, <laughs> out of salad. <laughs> out of salad. Salad. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the scary. Day. <laughs> the no. Salad I've got you. The lettuce is wilted. Oh no, it's all over. Um. I think based on the sort of idea of what we're doing now, going to do this journey and stuff, I think this is, his nightmare would be along the lines of an alternative journey, an alternative path that he could have taken. If he'd taken up Kimpire's offer, if he'd stayed in Dynatech, if he'd gone up, and the nightmare is more, he is, he's probably in Amargo. And he's standing there in a business suit, Dynatech business suit. And he's there on the board and he's living this life so detached and he's overseeing, he's seeing he, and knows about the instars. He knows that they're being enslaved and he just oversees it and he doesn't care. He's so detached now. And he, he shakes hands with Kimpai and Zeno hands in trade and stuff and just goes back has just this detachment and this coldness to the world like just so in that sort of zone of corporate capitalism and it's just so detached from everything he is and there is no art there is no expression it's all just this very cold sterile living yeah i barely have to do anything with that as we just watch this moth with four arms, long, slender, as they maybe like see like another instar and they're like bringing them into a factory of some kind and they're like malnourished, like pleading but in silence and you're just like mm. and push them in towards some Dynatech officials, some scientists and other people that like engineers that work the looms and the machines and they hook them up with these cowls that just feeds, the force feeds them and you just check your creds. Carry on. And you just leave. You enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Satisfaction of selling out my kind. 
as you all, Skelk and you, <gasps> come to life. The rest of you, I mean, like, I'll get to that in a minute, because you're outside, where Ida is just like... <laughs> I mean, like, I bet, yeah. No, you tell me, how, you tell Skelkin how Ida looks in this moment. Um, I think for the brief moment that, like, Skelkin kind of comes up, he's like, oh, okay. I can kind of, like, sort of, like, close down a bit so I don't have to pay so much attention to, like, the wilderness going on. I just kind of slump onto my sword as you just see the horns kind of just start dipping. I probably like I would have jumped up maybe not to my feet but mm-hmm. like to hands and knees so I'd mm-hmm. probably like crawl over to you put put my hand on your shoulder and like Skelkid you're away how old are you? Skelkid it's been 84 years my shoulders are on we need to get to the early bird supper at Dynatech I'm not on a mission of bingo oh my <laughs> and you can see he is exhausted. He is tired. You can feel this drain of energy from yourself. And like as, I mean, Caleb, you're outside as well. And you've been moved away from the wall. The last thing you remember is touching it. Mm-hmm. And then how do you wake up? It's probably just like the still thought that I'm going to be touching a snake skin. And then just sort of like that waking up in the body before actually moving, feeling around, going, okay, it's moss. Moss? Snake? Moss? Everyone? Oh, Ida! Mm? You're awful! <gasps> you, just you, see right? his, you just see his head kind of just drop Long. down as he hits the ground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, are just you dunk. guys all in the same tent, or are you all... Because I mean, obviously there's two tents. Mm. Are you two together? Are you two together? Who's, what's the arrangement what's here? What's the config? Um, I think I'll show you. Yeah. yeah. Tech Rose. Yeah. yeah. So I'll go to Roos first. How would you wake up? I mean, I, mean, I think this is probably pretty standard for Roos every fucking day. <laughs> Given the sort of like um, unusual situation, probably just like wings flapping everywhere. Feathers <laughs> <laughs> coming, coming up. Coming up. <laughs> and then just open the chicken and it's like, fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as Roos like barrels out of the tent. <laughs> You wake up first. Uh, I think... I don't think it would be so much aggression. I think it would just wake up and just try to cover myself. Just as if I'm trying to just stop myself from being hit yeah. or wounded or just something. And probably even for like a few, five, ten seconds after that, just kind of shaking a little yeah. bit, trying to come to senses. As you sit there shaking, the tent is quite light in here. It has these like little lines that act as like the like ley lines that act as the uh, environmental controls that sometimes pulse with either hot or cold, like orange or blue, depending on the situation that you're in. But obviously, the tent is also lit up by this orb that is not in TJ's hands. That is obviously like TJ is like slumped over, lying on the ground, and it has hit the ground and rolled off towards the door. Um, there's another orb in here. No, it's the no. same one. It's the one they normally hold when it's they're royal. in their meditative it's state. It's royal. <laughs> but Roy, she's fallen over. Right, he's fallen over, and Roy has rolled okay. towards the entrance oh, of the tent. Roy, no. Roy, roll an orb. Not his name. <laughs> uh, I think when I come to my senses, uh, I think just kind of open my eyes, take a deep breath, and just see TJ. And not woken up or anything, seeing Roy Orbison on the floor. Um, <laughs> probably, I think I'll go and grab Roy. Yeah. Um, and just you know, in one hand and then try and sort of shake TJ awake. When you grab Roy. Yeah. <laughs> this camera. For anybody who may be jumping in, this magical artifact that is about the size of a large grapefruit. Uh, and it's like it's, and it's like and it's the first time you've held it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, because I have had it in my yes. double story before, yeah. so I yeah. touched um, <laughs> touch Roy. <laughs> oh, hey, that Roy. feeling of a presence, that emotive yeah. state that is normally there with it, is kind of staticky. Mm. And then, as you wake up, you are, you pick up the orb and it's static key, and then it begins to slowly come back, and you get this sense of uh, curiosity and this sense of unknowing. And then you start waking up TJ, and TJ, I mean, like as you're being shaken awake, mm-hmm. how would you wake up? 
Um, I think TJ wakes up quietly, um, sort of like blearily takes takes some things in around him. Um, I think you see TJ's eyes a little bit more animalistic. You know when you go to pick up a small rodent and they get those big wide eyes of, oh, I don't quite like this. It's very, very primal sort of fear. Um, uh, oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you good? Uh, you, you good, bro? Um, I, I have been better. Yep, so. Um, I take it you had a rough night too. And I think he's just gonna re- reach into his pouch and take out his galaxy's best boss mug and just kind of hold it oh. close. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, pretty. Not great, not no, great. No. Um, do you do you want Roy back? Can they give you a bit of comfort? Oh, I, I, I hadn't even. Hey, um, Roy, how you, is you Roy? Kind of let go of Roy in your sleep. Oh, no, um, well, we don't sleep unusual with Roy. <laughs> um, How's he feeling? Uh, he's curious, I think. I'd say, well, Roy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> this awakening all happens at the same time as you jolt to feathers out of a tent. Kate's like, oh, Eda, you look awful. <laughs> Eda is just like, <laughs> I'm so fucking tired after like 48 hours now awake. Mm. Jeez. You currently can't see the sky above because of these vines that are in this place but as you all come to you notice the last of that entropy disappearing i hand it to you in this moment i think i'll probably come out of the tent yeah I'll come with <laughs> um but i think uh, just before i think i'll give tj a little pat on the shoulder and just like there's anything you want to talk about mm-hmm. we can likewise me i know what exactly um uh, um, a good person, as it were, um, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm... I'm not even a person, Cass, so there you go. You are a person, just... Uh, <laughs> not on paper. Different species, it's fine. No, I think we're doing it. You know, we'll uh, have a chat next yeah. time when we're not, you know, no stress, looking like shit. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like shit too. <laughs> <laughs> the temperature is starting to rise in here. <laughs> what I'm probably, like, rolling over to eat uh, like, Ida, Ida, I'm, I'm so sorry. Are you, are you okay? I didn't mean to leave you alone. I, I just wanted to pat the snake. It was a bad idea. Retrospectively. Is that what you call it? Episode title. I just wanted to pat the snake. Pat the snake. Pat the snake. Pat the snake. <laughs> Only a good enough reason in this exact it, it, It's okay. I, I said I'd cover you. I know, but I didn't mean to leave you alone. I'm, just, I'm sorry, are you all right? <laughs> I could just do with something stronger than coffee. Do, do you Can want I to slap him over the face? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, the <laughs> if you're going to, like, ricochet with the helmet, I don't want to, like, hurt him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please I don't. I want to shock him. <laughs> I'd be, you, that leads us to you guys when to make, make an attack or anything like that. I mean, if you want to deal damage and do it hard enough that it shocks no, him. No, no, I just want to shock him, not hurt him. This grey, vi- like, Viking-esque sci-fi lady comes over and just... I, the he, he just I you just see him lose balance off the sword, but he doesn't stop anything. You just see him go... I was leaning <laughs> next to you. <laughs> like, sort of still hold out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. tap. I like, like, hold your shoulder so you don't fall. You just I don't know what else to do. Like, I want to go back to sleep as well. <laughs> I... uh, as long as everyone's okay, oh. it's all that matters. Oh, is that two letters that can be used to describe you in this current room? Uh, I'll be all right. I'll, I'll walk it off. <laughs> I, I can give you a drink if you want. Please. <laughs> just, just get out, get out the other full mug. Good uh, God, man, you sound like your face terribly. A Monday non-alcoholic beverage. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it, mm-hmm. and then in my mind, it's going to be space dew. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> no, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of I was going with Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew, yeah. Mountain Dew, yeah. space. <laughs> Oh, 
My drink burned and it came out my nose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was, I would love that to be a thing with the episode. <laughs> the best, the best I can do it. You can if you spell it how Calyx intended it. I don't want to spell it that way. <laughs> 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 While you wait, you can head over to www.etsy.com forward slash Warrior Prince 3D. You can use the see me actually even though I don't oh. normally do it. You just you just hear me unclip my helmet as it just falls to the ground. He kind of grasps it with two hands still shaking because he's that tight and just tries and drinks it. Sorry, right, one minute I'll refill. <laughs> you just see him neck it again. <laughs> Keep it, keep it for the day if you need some energy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've, I've kind of tried to feel around without losing my balance to grab the horn of my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it killed me. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Was it? <laughs> Nobody watched. No. <laughs> it just oh, doesn't sound like that in my head. <laughs> Page. Oh, <laughs> oh well, I thought the book was just going to be filled with me. <laughs> um, oh my god. Okay. Is, there, is everyone safe? That's the main thing. We should probably mm. go and check. TJ. Hello. Hello. Check Hello. Hello. Check Bros are alive and kicking. Bruce. Bruce. Are yep. we going to hear you, yeah. fellas? Are you somewhat yeah. Is everyone alright? Physically, yeah. yes. Emotionally, Emotionally no. no. That was where everyone had. Oh, um, there was a time. A, a, yeah. I don't know if it's still talking through the tent, but just like <laughs> shouting it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. There was there was a there was a big snake last night. How big? Uh, it filled it from floor to we couldn't get okay, out. Okay. Have you seen so... Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> I've never you seen You know film. <laughs> the really big star cracking mining ships. Yes. Uh, yes, I am. Yeah. Seen. Like Bigger. that, but a bit longer. Oh. And then its head would just kind of phase in, phase out, weird eyes. I don't think I ever remember and seeing the end of the body. No, no. it just so see an endless loop of... This thing came here and we didn't wake up. How? I just... <laughs> <laughs> just like, why don't you wake me up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, 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 I mean, we did try. We tried we waking Skelkin up and just wouldn't just come away. Happen. And then mm. Calyx touched the snake. And just this was after a few hours. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, have we been no asleep at normal time? I mean, uh, eight, eight hours, right? It's, it's been about six hours. just so it has now been 12 hours, yeah, since the first. I mean, you'd be able to track your own time, yeah. So now you know you've missed the day mm -hmm. and you're now into the next night. Mm -hmm. No, oh. oh, is it now Bloody night hell. time again? Yeah, because mm -hmm. I realized yeah, yeah. I have time on it, so yeah, yeah. 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 that's what I was like. I was like, day to yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Do we need to mark off hours? No, because the temperature dropped. Mm -hmm. However, as the temperature is starting to rise again, or you can leave it off and save your hours. Um, you had one hour environmental protection. Well, have I have person. given you um, a Cathassan microcord one Which to you use. <laughs> So you know, okay. if you, it's an armor, so if you do want to change yeah. it over, do make sure you add it to your inventory if, and then. If it's night time, <clears throat> I think. I'm just trying to like look up. Yeah, it's like the most effort I could really do with a sneak. A sneak. A sneak. Sneak. One episode we're gonna get Sneak. Sneak. Cerberus sneak. DJ. I found the source of the nightmare. It's a big snake. But now the. So now there's an odd thing switch. here where you're um, really sleepy and you guys are now micro -cord. Oh, wait, yeah. unrested. Yeah, you have to go to um, sheet editor and then go to inventory and from there. I don't feel unrested. Is the uh, the tents there environmentally? Yeah. So, so we could go in them and not have to use the suits. Yes. 
Is there enough space for us all? Is one of those mine? Yes. Mm. Uh, you will be cramped, mm -hmm. but you could. Well, yeah, two man tens, but you know you, you can get three people in a two man ten. Well, we again, now up. I'm up and I've got Roy. I, again, I and I've got quite a lot of stuff left on my suit. I can... You do have to have the do the basically it's like the doorway to it closed mm -hmm. for it to work mm -hmm. properly, which means that you won't be able to look out if you are mm. in there. Well, I'm just thinking we. This guy needs to sneak. Mm. <laughs> you know, we can always be away just in tents, not use the protection. Yeah. You could always take a watch picking. I'm a, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, I could, but I don't want to use my hours. Alright, so we'll just risk our lives. So. Oh, hey, we'll just selfish. <laughs> hey, back off. Mm -hmm. I mean, I suppose I could use some hours up, I suppose. Well, I'm, I'm okay to go outside a couple for a few hours and watch. What am I? Calix, Calix, no. I love you, uh, but I know sorry. how many hours is left on that thing. I, isn't it? Scale, can you've used. Do you actually have a spell? Um, okay. 23 hours so far. Out of 48. Okay, if that's what you've got, then uh, depends on the level of the armor. It should say in the armor how much is uh, you've got as a thing. Um. Yeah, I, I can actually do a spell. It only lasts an hour, and I can only do it on one, but I can just repetitively do it on myself. So I can stay awake for at least four hours if we're going to do, like, Well, do you, do you want to do four? I'll do four, and that way people can conserve energy. Um, Sleepy bit sleepers and can get a bit of... I don't know where my sleep. armor is. I'm, I'm going to petition myself to do a bit of more, because I have quite a few hours of my yeah. suit now. Okay. I'm pretty sure so I do as well. You know, your your magic, you know, would if, if we get into a sticky wicket, we, we need you. Oh, this one doesn't cost me anything. Oh, even better. For well, that's not, not going into game mechanics, but <laughs> <laughs> this is a very easy spell to cast. My armor's just disappeared. Uh, it should be uh, <clears throat> in inventory. It should be. You are correct. There we go. It's just like not. So you guys going to attempt... Well, essentially, it's a long rest for you, while the rest of you sit all in the tents and yeah. wait eight hours. Tic tac toe. Throughout the night. Um, so it is a fresh night then. Yeah, I've got 48, so I can do a. So, yeah, 23 needs to come off that, and then whatever hours you're doing as a watch outside of here. So, you need to take eight hours for him to get a long rest. Um, who's taking how many hours outside? Um, I'm happy to take four. If, if, you, you've got we, if we do one. four. I'm happy to do four. Four. And some, is someone else willing to do... I know, oh, you've not got a lot of stuff left in the tank, have you? That's what mm. I've got spare right. armor after we can... I rinse this, yeah. so mm -hmm. I'm good. Fab. So should we do four and four? Yep. Okay. So, Smashing. you guys mark off uh, the four each? I'm actually going to take off I the armor. I don't know how we're I'm marking gonna... stuff off. So, Jack will be able to show you there. You can go into it and there's like environmental protection hours and then you can just... You can change it. Yeah, mm -hmm. to how many's left. So uh, every yeah. hour oh, okay. I'm going to cast climate adaptation on myself, <laughs> which reduces the severity yeah. of any... It makes it... <laughs> yes, so I would take so it on the so Armour off, leaving it in the thing, and then just... The dark make sure right. you... Uh, so while you're in the tent, absolutely fine, you don't need yeah. to do that, so you can save yourself the arcane and stuff. Saving. Make sure you unequip your yeah. armour for me, please. Just no, go to inventory and then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Right here. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I wouldn't have any mercury. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So, have you guys both all marked off the extra four yeah. hours, yeah? So, can you can now take a long rest. Yay. Uh, you don't lose any hit points at the end of it. Do I get rid of my fatigued? Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no nightmare for you. Um, oh, we didn't get to know Edith's nightmare. What I will also say is that throughout the... Um, <clears throat> this eight hours of basically letting him get it, we're now going to sink back up your body so that you can then carry on. So this will class as a rest, but it's not a long rest. Yeah. Um, you can take a short rest if you so wanted to. Draw it yes. Do we get anything back? Just. Uh, so short rest, uh, you get stamina points back. I um, don't need those. Yeah, um, no. So no, not during this one. That's can we it. just rest long enough that we can all long rest before we leave? I fall asleep again. Got <laughs> fucked by the snake. The snake's gone. <laughs> Hopefully the snake. I'm really back. struggling with maths. What? Oh, Forty-eight minus twenty-three. Minus twenty-five. We have left. Minus four. 
So it's meant to be Jory. I think during this time, just going out and about, I'm going to find some like general vegetation. Stuff that I may vaguely know that isn't poisonous and all the likes. Okay, so you're leaving this vine like den. It's like a 120 foot cave that you're in a vine. Probably a little bit, but I'm going to stay just like within like 10 feet or so of the outside. Okay, cool. Not that far. So, I need somebody, since we're on a new night, to roll a d20, please. Can I do it? Yeah, of course you can. Oh. Not that one. Two. Cottage cheese. That's very clumsy. Cottage cheese. Yeah, it's heavy. Oh, God. Sweet, you just said cottage cheese. Yes. <laughs> I'd rather that. Cottage <laughs> cheese. Cottage cheese. Yeah. What the fuck did you read that? You don't. Great, <laughs> don't you? Don't. Oh. oh, that is hard to read. They were my first set, and I realised that you can't actually. Sorry. So. <laughs> Add folly of you. <laughs> I've had acrylic trays, so I know I've got a, a leather one, so I can't. Mm. Bougie. bougie. <laughs> How white eh? It's bougie. <laughs> Say again. How white eh? Mm. Um, so, <clears throat> could you roll me a D12, please? Shit one? diamond! <laughs> Shit diamond! Shit D20, mate. <laughs> it's not in the tray, you didn't attempt to roll in the tray. Oh. <laughs> I mean, come oh, on! No. <laughs> There we go. Oh, that's that's right. We got it. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, about three hours um, into this is probably when you head out past the. Uh, well, it's essentially like seed shaped parting of vines that are like really thick that you can't see through that allows you to go back into this bioluma lemon jungle. And um, you can see all the light through there and everything like that and you begin to step out and start looking around. You give me a survival check if you're looking for vegetation and stuff. Is there anything particular you're, you're looking for? So the idea is, I don't know if you guys know uh, Vague Water. <laughs> all right, so um, I'm going to try and make people like little vegetation crowns with the idea of making us less... It's its that sort of like disguise tactic, you know, where you put like vegetation in your head so you look less like a thing. Like, I'm describing this so badly. You were trying right to now. break the, the, nat- the lines of sight and the... the that one. Yeah. So you yes. look less like a thing. Less like a thing. I'm trying to make you look less like a thing and more like a thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah. the idea <laughs> is I'm gathering things that I know are not poisonous, like people aren't going to have like an allergic reaction to... Poisonous. To I make... Know. Like little little crown things. Awesome. Four. Oh, that's a nat twenty. <laughs> that's you... gonna be my only nat twenty. It is. You also make a perception check, please. Uh, so it's twenty four on survival and perception. <coughs> please be in that one. That's an eighteen. Ooh. So perception. <clears throat> it does make you wonder why they didn't just shrine closer. Yeah, so it would've been easier. Twenty nine for. <laughs> And then Most. 27 for wow. 60 feet. So, it would be a journey, as you <laughs> go out and begin to collect these <laughs> um, stuff to break up line of sight and create camouflage, essentially. That's the, That's word. the word. That's the word. Um, you begin picking like little uh, vines and roots and different things that you can put into there, and you notice that somewhere, maybe just on the periphery of your like actual decent vision in this light. Maybe it's about 60 foot where it gets blurry for you. You just see like something moving. And... Blamange. Give me a stealth check. Stealthy. Ah. Three. <laughs> Blamange. Okay, this is back. <laughs> yeah, she's back. So the first roll I had was a four on the dice for perception just noticing you at that point, it did not notice you. Okay. Now that you have seen it, and you go to the launch, I will give it a second. Just a three. Hey. Ah, we're fighting another Calyx. Blamange, blamange. Calyx is blamange, it has no effect. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Son. I thought you went to go out It cannot see you. <laughs> and you are outside of its blind sight. Okay. <laughs> as this quadrupedal, bestial plant-like creature with these like vine-like tendrils that mm. snuffle at the ground like, <laughs> and pull in like, you see maybe like a little pixie 
gets sucked oh. in as it just. Of course, too far. But it's like mm-hmm. ten foot wide, seven eight foot tall. This like it's organic Dave. <laughs> oh, it is. But it, and it, like this pixie's like, <laughs> and it's eating as this vine comes out, and you just see this like octopus like beak in the centre. Just... <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, thank you. And it begins to like truffle round again. And you like, believe it or not, on a three and being over 30 foot away from it, it can't fucking see you. As you like, start making yeah. your way back. It doesn't seem to. Um, Skelkin, however, alerts Swallowed it to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, it doesn't do that. I mean, you can give me a, uh, a life science check if you want to see if you know what this is. To know what this is. Like, I don't know whether it's me or Calix so, that's fascinated by what this thing is. Snooty boops. Snooty boops. Oh, love Cheyenne. Snooty boops. That's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why that's a hunk or slunk. Ah, hunk or slunk. Uh, I've always, Dave. It's, it's clearly some kind of like sentient plant. Not the first of sentient plants you've seen, but this one has like full legs and uh, full snout. I mean, like, it looks like that. Uh, for those of you uh, who are watching on the podcast, watching on the podcast, listening on the podcast, <sighs> <laughs> maybe I'm going to regret the book. Um, the snobcast. Oh, so those of you watching on the podcast, um, it's a cassette. It's, it's an actual creature. It's a plant-like creature. Oh, it's so cool. It is. Uh, they usually come on like the forest cash realm, obviously homebrew and stuff. I'm like one here and this thing, uh, but it doesn't see you, and you manage to like get back to the party, and you're like. And after about an hour, it's yeah. Dance, movie, three words. First One word. word. Second, Second word. Two. Yeah. Huh? What? what? <laughs> One word. Second word. Two words. Two words. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Two words. <laughs> Two words. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Sunflower. Elmo. Big plant. Napalm. Horrific. <laughs> I love the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> Big. Gross. Monster. Plant monster. Mm. Outside. Uh. So we've got to be quiet. There's a plant monster outside. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! <laughs> it's a monster! <laughs> but it doesn't sense you. And uh, you guys can all come to like the event horizon of this vine area and uh, it'd be spotted out to you as it begins moving off and then you see a second one that maybe it's paired with mm-hmm. and they move off into the brush as morning approaches you are long rested yeah um and yeah we are at the start of day six you have lost a day's travel basically that's okay it's fine <laughs> Start on the road again. I can't wait to be home. Early morning rises. Uh, you can see outside that the um, glowing colours of the jungle all dissipate and start like blinking out as you know this to be the start of daytime. You can leave this darkened den. You can carry on your journey. You just let me know what you're doing. I will put the armor back on. I pack up my tent. Which arm is that? The Kasatha. <laughs> Are you still carrying the other one as well? Um, give it to me, I'll put it in my full story. I'll give it to you, I'll put it in your full story. Can you take it off, that way your encumbrance will go down. So, does it just charge by not being used? No. Uh, you have to go back to a starship or a, a major uh, city or port or something like that to charge it. Armour, unfortunately, has its own, like, you have to, like, plug it in somewhere on a mains adapter and, like, let it charge up. Was this like Apple when it had its sort of series of unique charger cable things? Oh, God, do you remember the dark times? Yeah. Yeah. But it's not like a unique way, it just means that, like, every ship has basically the capability to charge armour yeah. and every space station, every, like, major settlement and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to suggest that we maybe pick up the pace a little, go on a little bit more of a route march than a stealthy stealth, and just try and catch up on a bit of time. Time is of the essence. Uh, Sounds good. I agree. If, 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 if he's uh, fucked off by now, we might be all right, but we'll just keep keep our wits about us. But we, I'm very aware that some of us are a little low on the environmentals than mm. others, yeah. and we've got to get back still, so. Yeah, <laughs> but are we too oh, low to get yes. back? Hopefully not. <laughs> We're over halfway, maybe. Yeah, so. Hmm. Do you know if there's any technology where we go in? 
any sort of so. power station <laughs> nuclear no. power plants. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'd never seen a spaceship in my life until last year. Fair Mike. Enough. Okay. So I don't think most of my people have. Future tech idea, we make some sort of portable charger. Uh, like a yes. Yeah, yeah. Wait, did plan. lamp, what's his use? I was just gonna say, could we repurpose lamp in a pinch if needs be? I don't think it has much of a power source on them. Mm. What would you want to repurpose it into? Why did we blind the <laughs> <laughs> We couldn't get back from with our hours. This was a discussion we had. Where the was we didn't, I don't think we anticipated the... Uh, Dangerous. Yeah. The, I don't think we thought we'd all be sleeping for 12 hours. <laughs> and then eight. <laughs> so, but yeah, I think just get a wiggle on. Um, I think once we've reached the shrine, we'll have a little bit of a better idea about how we potentially get back. Mm -hmm. It's quicker going downhill yeah, than it is going exactly, up. Yes. I, I mean, maybe there's a boat and we can take a boat back on the river. Maybe we can mm. knock the shrine down and use it as a sled so they can re make it yes, easier. Yes, let's desecrate someone's <laughs> sacred memorial we can move and it sled closer. down on it. Move it closer so they don't all die on their journey. That's not the point of the journey, <laughs> though. Do you think this is better? Yes. Well, I mean, we can get a wiggle on. Yeah, yeah, otherwise we're going to stay I, here yeah. and just gonna gonna go, the this hours. Gonna gonna go. gonna 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 Ooh, I forgot From how dice work. Anybody who's going to look into that answer for you guys are heading off there. TJ is yeah. going up to the edge to have a look at uh, 14. Cool. Seems clear. Ooh, nat 20 with Two. a 1 to 20. Are we all doing it? If you want to, yeah. as you begin your day. Ooh, uh, 22. 26. 26. Anybody else? No, I, I think I'm still horrified yeah. by the thought of like the desecration. <laughs> uh, desecration. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, meaning. Yeah. Your early morning. 25. Yeah, it seems absolutely clear out there as the sound of morning jungle animals and the hoots of maybe mammals or other kind of creatures in the trees all begin to um, sound. And it's now louder than it has been for the past 24 hours in this one area where you had this deadly den of plants which would devour anything that entered the area so everything stayed clear of it, followed by some kind of entropic being Seemingly siphoning energy from your dreams. Right, can Let's I on. give everyone the crown while we're walking along? Yes. So I don't know if these will help, but it's just to maybe make us blend in a bit more. I'm just going to hand you all a sort of like very weird weaving woke the crown with just bits sticking out at all angles. <laughs> <laughs> the princess of the party. <laughs> Who would like to roll day sixes d20? Oh, 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 you, oh you, it. It. You, oh, you got noticed. <laughs> that is a nine. A nine. Mm. <laughs> Everything goes oh, fine. To land and if I do it. that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Can you roll a d8 for me, please? A d8. D8. Seven. You find a travel later. <laughs> <laughs> you find a travel lodge. <laughs> the days are unimpeded. Yeah. Yay! Um, <laughs> you have a day of fine travel. There are hard moments and it gets hot, and obviously, this is 12 hours worth of travel. Envi if you guys are keeping the environmentals up, let me know. If you're having them down, let me know. 12 hours. Tw sorry, how much? 12. 12, 12 hours off. What? Yeah, what? you have an unimpeded day, so 12 hours travel. Fuck me. What is it worth <laughs> having them up? So, um, what you notice from before is that as it gets hotter and hotter, it becomes easier to become fatigued, which can then affect certain things. If you think that you could handle hot weather and you think that you maybe, you know, you could make a decent fortitude save mechanically, there's no reason to so not have them on. Mecha so mechanically, you can't just decide when you're getting too hot and put it back up. Because it, the game has to work in hours, we would have to say, right, okay, you're leaving it off for an hour. At the end of that hour, you would then have to make the fortitude save, and then you decide after that whether or not you want to keep it going. So, I've only got nine hours left. 
I mean, I can I can always uh, like try and spell boost. Just if to if help needs you. be, we'll get With we'll get to that bridge. The, we'll can I do a life science check to see what colours would go most undetected? Because I've realised I've got wardroom change, which is uh, permanent, so I can literally just change the clo- colour of my clothes and everyone else's. To oh, kind I mean, make it this is a vibrant jungle of every colour imaginable on the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of it is. Yeah. I mean, you've been through it mm. out this whole place and yeah it goes from like really dark colours right the way through to vivid mm-hmm. crazy uh, neons I don't know if there was something that would be act more as a camouflage than the one constant colors. is that the most of the soil in the ground is like a dark blue um, just a word of guys with the whole calyx giving us the crowns to break up our line of like the sharp edges and all of our technology I can kind of change your wardrobes. I don't have a wardrobe. I can change your clothes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got my robes. I earned those robes. They're still I like my cave. <laughs> but it could be more fabulous, though. But I like my cave. It's mine. It's just an offer. Just so we Is it blend it in a bit more. <laughs> no, no. Is it's it just... forever? To, to what extent? I can change its colour. Uh, and essentially, I can alter the clothes you're wearing and, and make them into a new outfit, sort of minor changes, mostly cosmetic. So, you c- can you put like a big old gaping maw on the back of my cape? Ooh, ooh. with I, match! <laughs> I mean, I could try. Why do you guys have that discussion? <laughs> and we start moving into night time. Are you bedding down for the night? Are you going to try and push through? I've had to push through. Yeah, we've not yeah. got time. Yeah. 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 Well, the temperature oh. doesn't drop, that's the thing. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say possibly after after realising about the whole return and everything. Uh, possibly after like five or six hours, I'd actually take the Cassandra armor off. Okay. And then I'd start doing the spell adaption, climate adaption thing. So are you keeping the armor on but just turning the environmentals off? Or are you taking the armor off off? Oh, I didn't know I could just turn the environmentals off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll turn the environmentals off, keep the thing on, and cool. then just <laughs> climb it. I mean, you can take your arm roll if you want, that'd be great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Squishy. <laughs> so you guys are electing to push through the night? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. First thing I need, then, as you are going through the night, is a fortitude save from everybody. Ooh. She's a different guy. Uh, Natty 20! Natty twins oh. only over there. I'm going to spend a cred to re-roll mine, because it was so bad. Oh, 20. That's better. Oi. So, let's start over here. Calyx. 13. 13 is a fail. Uh, 19 plus 3, 22. Pass. 16. Uh, ooh, that might be a fail. Shit. Shit. It's a fail. Shit. Uh, 28. Pass. 25. Pass. 20. Pass. You two, can you both mark the fatigue condition oh, on your character, please? Mm. I hate fatigue. Hey, up. D20 from somebody throughout the night, please. Someone else do it. God, I don't think I've lived. Nine. Nine, you go. Nine! A D8, please. Fatigue. Next D20 rolls. Three. No, that's not why I fucking told you, mate. I was going to say, I want that to go. Well, mate. Oh, my strength is even worse. <laughs> However, having already encountered the Entropic Devourer, <laughs> you um, have an uninterrupted night. Yay! Yay. Yay. Another 12 hours of um, environmental protections need I to go on. Those, uh, <laughs> okay. I'm a minus three. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. How many hours did you have left at the start? Nine. The 12 hours. So nine hours, yeah. So uh, it would run out at the nine hour mark. I will turn my environmental protection back on. Yeah. Okay. So and three, then, three hours of that. Three actually. hours, okay. And then I will start every hour just going. Bruce. Bruce. Is that and that's not like a once a day thing, that's like... It's it's a cantrip. So is that... That's yeah. fucking great! It's a... So I can just keep doing it as a cantrip. So am I good now? Yeah. Cool. So every, but you are out of environmental But the thing is, I can only zero. really do it on one person. So yes. if everyone starts okay. going... Still fucking good, though. Cheers, Calyx. 
But uh, look, you're looking a bit sweaty. I thought you were just like a cloud of vapor. Cloud of vapor. I think some so people fun. did. And but because so it weighs so much as well, yeah. carrying yeah. it as a pain in the ass. Oh. That's hard. Oh, I have spare armor from the viewers if you need it. Is it tucked up? Is it full? Uh, How many hours have you got left? Uh, let me have a little look. Well, uh, while you guys look at that mechanically, we're going to go to break, yeah. as then we start going into the next morning. For that. Oh, God. We're going to take a 10 minute break, Twitch. Um, obviously, if you're on the podcast, then we will just be back in a moment. Same with YouTube. Uh, yeah, see you in about 10. Neck. Can I get a ho oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> wow. I was like, <laughs> that had some sustain. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. Um, hey, Ooh. everyone. Ooh. Ooh. It's a macaroni. <laughs> with the chicken strips. What's it? When we look at like memes that have got sounds to them, mm -hmm. rather than just memes, um, what's everyone's favourite one that lived in their head rent free with the sound? So oh, I don't even think. Hello, sexy banana. <laughs> Free Shavakadu. That's mine. Free Shavakadu. I've got a Stop. I've got a drop box for soap. <laughs> I also get, can I put that down? Oh, yeah. Can I put that down? No. <laughs> Look at all these chickens. <laughs> oh, it's a fucking goat. <laughs> Benjamin. Benjamin. Oh, you were with us, weren't you, on the beach with Cherry Whiskey, Yaz? And that guy's dog was like in heat. Yeah. And like, so we were on. Um, <laughs> was, was it Port Tree? It was like, what? Well, it was a really long one. It was. I think it must have been Port Tree. It was. It's that all good reading. Yeah. But one of the longer beaches down here in Old Kernshire. And, yeah. um, or Cornwood. Which, uh, Kernshire or Cornwood? Kerno. Kerno. Kernshire. Um, and. Fucking Emmets. Yaz's dogs at the time. Um, we're quite young. They've both been done, but like this other yeah. dog, this male dog, was young, was in obviously like in the mood, and uh, that's what, how you describe a dog that's on here <laughs> in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whoa! <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Hey, baby. Hey, girl. Bark. And it was really, it obviously turns out, and eventually we were like, all right, the owner's like, sorry, really sorry, and like took the dog along. A big fucking dog, wasn't it? And. Um, all we saw, and it's like after Fenton video had been out for ages, was just this guy like, ah, ah, like miles away in this fucking dog. Like, you know when all four paws are off the ground? Like, yeah. <laughs> like you know, it was properly, properly ready for some sex. <laughs> and it was so funny, and all I could see was that video. <laughs> like, yeah, she's like, she's got two red setters, just like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Benson. <laughs> it was that moment, and we, we got it to lift that, that moment. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so sounds from memes that live in your head. Um, Free Shabakadu. Free uh, Banana. Alex? I, there's so many, I can't <laughs> actually think of them. I agree with that. I just, if I think of songs. Yeah? Like, um, I was once a tree, oh, was a elephant in a cake, but I never saw the way the ends of the rig. Jeez, a that's a throwback. Yeah. Yeah. Really old, yeah. Um, let me tell you something. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> let me tell you something. Look, this guy's about to bungee jump. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, chill. Oh, <laughs> what even is that? <laughs> is it, what the hell even is that? I, I struggle at that. Daddy, chill. <laughs> you can't park there, mate. Oh, my God. I fucking love saying that to people. <laughs> Where did oh. you get your car from? <laughs> <laughs> I always be like, Bye bye, 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 a arduous trip for a self discovery such for a reason. A small population. <laughs> Dead. Sending their, their babies out into the night. Have uh, we just taken the off route and there's just a straight <laughs> path that he's on the hill? We have had a look. I looked at Ian's face and was like, Yeah, I was like, follow the river. It's yeah. like Jacob's ladder up to the uh, <laughs> mountain top. Th there's a ski lift. <laughs> Nobody mentioned Charlie the Unicorn. Uh, that's a throwback as well. Oh, yeah. That's Coral! Take a <gasps> Coral! Coral! <laughs> it, um, people, Carl. Like, when the um, memes came up for um, Walking Dead as well, it was like, Coral! Coral! <laughs> that was a memorable one. 
Um, I just Does anybody remember? Cut off his hand and ate them. Salad fingers. Yes. Let's go back. Oh, I yes. adore salad fingers. Yes. Yes. I, watch I have this. I don't know if this is true, but there's this uh, a myth that the guy who made salad fingers is actually Devo. Devo? I remember Devo. Oh, fucking yeah. Devo, innit? Yeah. Yeah, fucking, oh, I'm going to throw a can of worms at this fucking uh, pigeon. Yeah. I don't know if that's true, but... But that just makes me of a yeah. horse who did proper crimbo. Oh, uh, Bolsh Lecter. Bolsh Lecter. Yeah. Yeah. Craig David. David yeah. Craig. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, the jungle track is... Massive. <laughs> I think DJ Calyx is awesome. Nah, we're not in games, we've not getting <laughs> one. No, no, I was going to say, that's a good joke. It's fun. Oh, wait, we've already got the name of the episode. Um, yeah, Pet the Snake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I pet that snake? <laughs> Can I roll to pet the snake? Can I pet that snake? Can I pet the snake? It's a fucking bear. That's the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this journey of self discovery, the. the installs have to make is arduous. Mm -hmm. At what point do don't you blame most of them not for doing it? <laughs> yeah, but it's their choice really. And some of them don't even go on this journey for that. It's only if they want to go to the temple and do the spiritual, you know, seeing their living dreams come to life. Mm -hmm. As well as then getting to the end of seeing the possibilities of who they could possibly be. And yeah, it's a hard track to make, as you guys have found out every day and night so far. Luckily, for the past 24 hours, you have managed to keep it going. Environmental protections are starting to get thin on the ground. Bruce is now, you're out of them now, and you're being zapped every hour. Do you remember that from night times when you were on watch and stuff as well, please? I was going to say it's probably best to swap the armors for night time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you guys, mechanically, have you guys swapped any armors over and stuff that you were carrying that's fair? No? So got a few hours left on um, stuff like that? second skin to inventory. Second skin? No, is that no. all armor? That's a light armor. To which end, obviously, if you are keeping your armor, unequip it, but keep it in your inventory. Obviously, the bulk then cheap mm -hmm. is still there, but if you're like, well, no, I don't want to carry this much, yeah. you remove it from your sheet mm -hmm. and you leave it in the jungle. Free uh, percent armor already. So that's up to you guys as to when and that happens. I'm confused. So unequipping it is just taking it off from wearing it. Oh, like when you're changing, you mean when we run out of juice? Yeah, so yeah. you can keep it on, it still acts as normal armor, but the environmental protections are gone. But if you're switching into other armor, if you're carrying okay. two sets of armor, they still have to be in your inventory to affect your bulk. Yeah. Um, but if you go, I'm carrying too much now, I'm going to drop a set of armor that I'm not using, then you'd have to remove that from your sheet. Oh, yeah. 24 hours. Um, so, I'm good. If you guys when you're sleeping, oh. I can always just tap. But well, you don't need it. Not in the, you don't need to while you're asleep because you're in the tents. So unless something happens to the tents, then you're fine. But I mean, it saves you one hour for the trip back as well, so I can just every cool. hour. Yeah. But bear in mind, obviously, you're all going to need rest and stuff mm. like that. So have you now sorted out armors and got things where you need them to be as you mm -hmm. begin day seven mm -hmm. of this trek? Who's rolled on that D20? Why are you going to be like this? <laughs> <laughs> you said you hadn't done it yet. 19. Come D6, please. Oh, smiling. Oh, smiling. I should have used my shit dice. Mm. One. One? Why are you sounding so excited? Well, this is the exact same For podcast users, Ian's got a shit eating grin. Yeah. <laughs> As per. <laughs> Wipe it off. Oh, this is the encounter you wanted, isn't it? Nope. No. Um, you have another unimpeded day. Yay! Yay! However, all of you kept your environmentals oh, on, yeah? I actually, yeah. Um, I've, got, I've only got nine hours on this one. Okay, so uh, <laughs> when you get to the nine hour mark, obviously, are you switching into other armour or are you... I'm confused because I thought, I was under the impression that we wouldn't need it on all the time. When you are outside of the jungle, for heat, you absolutely need it on. But you can choose to not have it on and just chance making the saves. I thought there was like patches where we wouldn't need it. I don't know. There are. Mm. You just haven't been through them yet. 
Well, actually, when the uh, Entropic Devourer was there, you didn't have to have them on. Mm. Um, <laughs> so there's 12 hours saved there for the I guys. mean, I can always switch and ask Bruce to turn his environmental on after the nine hours and then start tapping you. Mm. I, I have got spare armor, so okay. I mean, I think I might. Um, I might give it a little risky risk. Okay. So for the last three hours. But I will swap to my good armor so in an emergency I can Absolutely power fine. up. So, are uh, you switching the armor, yeah? I am indeed. But you're going to save the three hours and just try and make it through the heat? Yeah. Kind of fortitude saving for it, please. I like Ouch. this. You didn't, you tried to roll it in the tray there and it didn't go in. Yeah, it did. I'm going to roll that. That's not better. Um, <laughs> I'm going to re-roll that. <laughs> First time. Why are you doing this to me Crest sticks are in. Two spent. I got 17, but I'm struggling to try and do this. I 17? On the dice? Uh, no, 11 on the dice, and I'm, mm, I'm 90% sure I've got a plus 6. Double check that one, please. Can I switch my armour over first? Well, you said that you switched your armour over, so I'm Yeah, I'm trying to do it on the doodah. Oh, okay. Just to untick the, uh, the equip box yeah. and do it on the other one. Because we're on a threshold here. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure. It's a plus six. So 17, yeah? Yeah. Pass is DC 17 for the uh, fortitude saves Whoa. on the 15 for E. Um, so you pass three hours. You're sweating, but you're fine. Uh, so no fatigue for you. As you guys get to night time, obviously some of you are now tired. Mm -hmm. If you try and push through again, you are going to potentially risk exhaustion. Mm. Are you going to bed down for the night, or are you going to try and push through? I don't think it would be smart to carry oh, on I'd again. like to sleep. Yeah. 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 I got no legs. Okay. Shame. <laughs> so, um, obviously, like between either following the river, following different places um, that have to pull you away. Like sometimes there's like gorges where you can't follow the river. And you have to go the long way around certain rock features or different uh, elevations, mudslides and stuff that you just actively try and avoid so that you make your journey as safe as possible while also battling the environmental hazards that are here. You keep your wits about you for the day and you end up having a day where you're like, okay, there's a threat over there, we're going to wait, now we're going to pass. And you, you're getting into a stride of it. Mm -hmm. You get to night time, you find like a small clearing. Maybe you can hear rushing water of like some kind of falling rapids just off to the, it would be your currently, uh, it would be your east side, your east northeast side. And yeah, you can start setting camp for the evening. Um, obviously, that was 12 hour day. Anybody who needs to mark off 12 hours, marks off 12 hours. Then as we move into the night time, is there anything particular you guys are doing at night time before we start rolling some dice? No, but that fortitude save, did you say that was going to be hourly? Uh, no, I got that wrong. It's once per day. So Once per day? Yeah. Oh, I would have risked that. <laughs> well, I didn't want to risk it for you without you here. No, that's um, fair. Yeah. Um, um, no, because I would have kept happy, you, so you're all right. Okay. Well, once per day, once per night. So, is there anything happening as you set up camp? No? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you guys start thinking about order of watches and stuff like that, who's rolling that d20 for the night time? Me. <laughs> Three. Three! Can you roll a d8 for me, please? I feel like this is just Five. the dice version of this thing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Five. Yeah. Uh, what's the order of uh, people's watches and can you also roll me a d12 please I would like to take um, the latter four hours just because mm -hmm. I'm very tired and I'd like to get rid of that first no, I also oh, would like oh, to sleep yeah. soon I'll the, get to I, the first watch I think the two that are actually fatigued need to be asleep like, yeah mm -hmm. ASAP. Okay. I only need the four though because I've got Roy so I'll take so, the second watch I can Who's got first watch? Cool. I'll do first. Cool. Ida, Zach, Ida, 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 Ida. Alex, did you roll a d12? Ida, yes, eight. Eight. Ida's first, and then second, and then third. Oh, I, I th do Sorry, we have to do three? How, how many, many do we need? Oh, Four. Map 20 with a one. Um, so, you need eight hours, but the night time itself is 12 hours long. <laughs> so, it's a case of just 
if, work out who's on for the... If we have three watches, we can all get a long rest if nothing happens. Yeah, so you yes. need to get basically six hours of sleep plus two hours of downtime. Yeah. You obviously only need four hours of downtime. Yeah. Yeah. So if we could do with three watches then, yeah. ideally. So um, so I'm going to say you need to sleep straight out if you're fatigued. I'm not. You're not? Oh, you're no, not. No, fatigued. no, no, that's why I took the first sure. watch. So, so yeah, you, and, yeah, so yeah. we'll definitely Maybe need to use back One, down. two, three. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Okay. Well, I, so I am to gonna ask what what you guys' perception. Like? I am gonna say I, it makes yep. sense for me to come and do a watch because I have a lot oh, of yeah, environmental protections. Oh mm-hmm. so yeah. So we don't actually have to do one and one. Mm. So if I do, if we pair up, maybe. Mm-hmm. So we we one, mm-hmm. and then you two, mm-hmm. you three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So you're in uh, two hours. First, mm-hmm. okay. So uh, you have to get outside of the tent. So that's two hours off your environmental protections. Yeah. If, unless you want to leave them off. Uh, well, if I've rolled, do I need to roll again for the night? The nighttime, yes. Because it's it still only hot. a couple of hours ago. Yes. Because oh. mechanically, it has to work in that. I've on taken them off. Yeah. Doing cool. This. Two hours uh, of that one. Uh, perception check, please. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. With a nat twenty. Nice. Uh, 23. 23. Um, there are every now and again these sounds of like um, resonant. They're not quite barks, but they're like um, it's like somebody coughing, but when they've got like a chest infection, and you get that long like. <coughs> oh, what that but like. yeah, it's really resonant, and it like echoes out, and it seems to be like a call and response that happens. Uh, but your watch goes um, un. Eventful. As you wake up, who's number two? I will relay the flammy conversations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Perception checks from both of you, please. Bye, 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 bye. Eighteen. Thirteen. Natural one. Thirteen. Fuck me, man. <laughs> Fuck me. Who are you, Kaylee? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Shall we? Bruce, yeah, you, you both can hear these call and responses that are happening. Sometimes they sound close, sometimes they sound far away. Um, it definitely sounds like things moving in the jungle around. Um, but there's definitively, like, they don't go to the west. They're only really in the east and the northeast. But I think you struggle to hear them because of the river that's close by and yeah. the rapids. But Bruce, yeah, you definitely pick up on it and you're like, yeah, it's still happening over there. Um, your watches, apart from that, pretty clear. Mm. As we move to watch three, you need to mark up your two hours of environmental protections unless you're leaving oh, them yeah. off. Your hour three, yeah? Yep. There's. Yeah. Both of you on? Uh, I'm w- I'll join in on hour four. Okay, cool. Well, technically, no, sorry, uh, oh, I'm what, so, Yeah, so this is our fault? Yeah, so yeah. it's been two, four, so yeah, actually, yeah, you four hours. Oh, and do I get my long rest? Yes, you've that? had okay. a long rest. Um, perception checks. Calyx. Um, 15 or 13. Uh, so 15, yeah, yeah, perception yeah. for sight and stuff, yeah, it's minus two. Um, 25. 25. <laughs> 25. Uh, so again, sound wise, yeah, you pick up on these, it's pointed out to you by the other guys for both of you. Where there's this gorge, there's a bit more of a clearing in the canopy. So you can see the night sky of um, the Kashorian aura, this dark purple at night time, the stars beyond it, almost like this beautiful reflected reflection of water on the sky itself as, yeah, you just hear the sounds of the jungle, this rushing water and, um, I mean, drawing your guys as watch, do you do anything? I think... Um, no, you go. I'm going to take... I think, again, in silence, just he's just going to take out his mug and then take out the remainder of the whiskey that he had from um, the previous captain of Orion's Hope and just pour out a little... <laughs> Want anything with it? I quite like the way it burns. <laughs> oh. Is it like bacterial wine? 
I'm, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Just don't look so lone. Do you want a little sip? Yeah, go on, I've never had whiskey. Mm. That's mm. sensible, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! So I breathe, breathe. Oh, I just swallowed in my cheeks. You like that? Hmm, I do. Oh. Gonna get that out the ever full month. <laughs> <laughs> get out some lemonade in that one. <laughs> and start sipping the lemonade. Yeah. Um, do you guys you know, stay in the middle of the camp? Do you do anything else? I think we're gonna stay with the camp. Yeah, I'm not gonna really go too far. I'm gonna yeah. enjoy looking at the stars and kind of babble on about star planets, oh, planetary yeah. locations to you. I'm gonna make do that. Mmm, yes, mm. interesting. Mmm, better. I didn't know you were so interested in stars. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Let me tell you about this one! Oh god! Ah. We well, start here enjoying this. Those barks, those throat sounds are getting louder. They're definitely off to the east. But they're starting to be like you're starting to pick up the vibrations of them as well. Um, they don't sound like the massive dinosaur alien that you fought before, but there could be something maybe a bit more high-pitched about it that's similar to those. Um, yeah, I mean, but it, yeah, it sounds a lot closer than it was earlier in the night. I think they're coming this way. I think we should be ready to go if, if they get any closer. or worth trying to um, just run or fight. Depends what they are, isn't it? It's uh, and how the others are and <clears throat> at this point we've really got to conserve ourselves as much as possible, haven't we? I mean, I, I hope this does end soon because my, my environment is sort of ain't too great and some of the other guys are not too good either. Who got the highest altitude on the perception chat? It's during this conversation, like you hear them getting closer and closer, mm. and it still sounds like it's up towards the river, but then you start hearing like more of a uh, a repeat of the same noise. It's almost like a, a klaxon or an alarm. You can tell it's a natural mm. something is making this noise, it's, it's some kind of living being. And um, you kind of go to the edge of the camp and you start looking out towards the gorge and this like it's like 30 40 foot gap where this like 20 foot down is this like fast moving river and on the other side of it you can see these bipedal reptilian creatures they have this almost like a flat bill snout but it's like got razor sharp teeth like an alligator's poking out of each end of it they have this like scaled dome head and they are for lack of a better word, raptors. Mm. And they are... And then calling out. And you can tell that they can smell something from the other side of the river towards where you guys are. And they are just calling out into the night. And you start to hear, off in the west, this response. Ah. 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 Staying I think, think it's worth getting the others up. I think we should move. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think we should. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, probably, probably worth getting up and going. Or they were, they were sniffing. Could we disguise our scent somehow? Roll in mud. I don't know. The water will Gross. probably. It's not that bad. <laughs> um, I don't know. The water would probably disguise our scent a bit. Mm. If we've got them on both sides, I think we don't want to get pinched in a. Oh. Yeah, get stuck and eaten. What are you doing? How far away? Can, is there any, like, any kind of sense of distance from the one in the west? So, give me a spiral check. I'm really not very good at those. Oh god, what was that? Um, uh, Da, 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 13. Not as close as the other ones. <laughs> um, 
you get the sense that, um, I mean, give me a life science check on top of that. Okay. Okay, that's better. 22. 20. So something that maybe you picked up on or something that's been said during people's travels, maybe something Bruce has said, but um, birds tend to have a call and response when they're hunting. You know, one will call from miles away and another one will hear it and then start moving towards that. And it's a call and response thing for creatures to do when they are hunting in like sporadic packs. And you think that these two that are on the other side of this river maybe can't get across to you. So are calling in other members of the pack that are split, split off. And... Um, Surely, they have no eyes, you can see that, so they must have other ways of sensing, whether that's through uh, hearing, whether that's through, uh, you know, this big domed head being like an echolocator, mm. maybe it's a blind sight, maybe it's, you, you don't know, yeah. or it could be scent based, but there is definitively a like, they can smell something to eat, and I'm like, we can't get it. It's this way. You guys come get it. Yeah. yeah. I read about this in Player Sprack, so there is some very good <laughs> articles, actually. Um, Technically, it's called Playbird. <laughs> yeah, but then they've got a little insert that's called Player Sprack, which is where you get all the articles. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there's page three birds. <laughs> <laughs> very lovely, lovely plumes. <laughs> um, I, I think we should probably get the others up and... Do you think... Get the others up and then try and shoot those ones on the other side as like a warning shot. Like if they suddenly sense like pain and danger, maybe they'll be like, "No, don't go towards this food." Do we, do we want to try that first? Could do. Do you want to? I mean, it would mean that everyone gets their rest if it just like how and how far them. away are they? Like if I go back to where I was before to that kind of. Yeah, it's sort of towards the ridge, probably like 10 foot away from the edge. And then there's like this 30, 40 foot gap of like just a massive drop down into then what is fast rapids. And then they're just on the other side of it. So you're looking at like 50, 60 feet maybe. I'm gonna throw a grenade at them. <laughs> what the fuck can you throw? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can always shoot magic out of them. Yeah. I might save you a grenade. But a I mean, bit of yeah, but of giving a bit of a shocky shock. Might be worth keeping the grenade if the ones that way come to us. I'll have, I'll have one ready. You want you do one that way, and I'll be ready. Okay. Um. Yeah, I use magical arrow at the ones on the other side of the river. Okay. Uh, I guess that's an attack. That's an attack. <laughs> Um, I think I get to roll for each. It's magical projectiles. I forget this one. I think I cast for each one. So the first one's a four. Sorry, eight, which is probably a fail. Ten. Fifteen. Fifteen hits. Okay. Uh, it's two d six piercing. Oh my god, I don't have a d6! I Where are some d6s? What's the d6 of this one gone? There you go. Uh, four, five, six, seven damage. Um, piercing damage. And, I mean, are you doing anything else with this? Are you just silently casting this off? I'm or? trying to be as silent as possible, but to sort of, like, be like a warning, like, don't come this way. Okay. I wanted to, as as Kelly is doing that actually, I want to try and mimic kind of um, some of like the more scary sounds we've maybe heard in the um, in the forest as we've been going through, like one of the bigger creatures. I mean, that sounds like a survival check to me. Can I not use my karaoke profession? No, because unless you are a karaoke, you know, Jimmy Borges singer, oh, then... I'm singing Triffid. <laughs> you know, I think the most the so scary things that you have found have these massive guttural roars, which I don't yeah, see... Screamo. A... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this is a survival. It's thrash metal. That's all right. Okay, it's a 16. It's not bad. Okay, now give me an intimidate. Okay. That is a dirty 20. Yeah, that's how maths works, yeah. 
Yep, yeah, yeah, that's Click the track, rock. Woo! It's eight. Seventeen. <laughs> you send off this, um... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, you are like being silent, and then this bucking guy next to you <laughs> just starts screaming <laughs> as uh, you loose the arrow. Maybe that's why the first two miss, <laughs> and then like the second, the last one hits, and that one uh, in fear begins to run. The other one is still sniffing and is like, it looks like it's gonna go, but then it's like, begins starts calling again. We're going to enter a loose initiative at this point. Okay. Uh, okay. Surely we'd wake up at that, <laughs> at that point. Yeah. The rest yeah. of you hear this fucking monster noise, and it's just like, here we go. We're going to enter a loose initiative. It's just going to be, I'm going to ask you guys what you want to do, and yeah. then I'm going to do something, because oh. this thing can't get at you. Cool. The others can't yet. Yeah, <laughs> but it's still making noise. Yeah. I want to try and shoot it with my um, uh, uh, laser pistol. Okay, is that? Bollocks! 13. You guys hear a defeated <laughs> as you hear this roar, you then hear a laser pistol. Shit, something's going down. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Getting Chill. out of the tent and pulling whoever I'm sharing the tent with out of it so I can pack it up so we don't die later on mm -hmm. if we don't die here. Yeah, you start packing down the tent, it's gonna take a couple of minutes. You don't see any danger straight away as you pull Roos out that say. Um, I open the tent, you should just see my finger go out with my hand and you just see magic missiles just go... <laughs> you can't see the target from where you are, no. Currently. No. no. Uh, I would probably just roll out the tent and be like... Did you give me a perception check from there? Be like, I was going to say I'd probably be pointing like, over there, over there. Well, you guys want to come away from the camp ever so slightly, oh. so... Yeah. Alright, well, we're coming back to the camp yeah, then. God, that's... Four. Four. <laughs> no, you hear the pistol off to one side towards the river, mm -hmm. you start moving your way back, um, you... Because the was like, right, we've got to go, starts packing down the first tent. Uh, I think we just probably just sort of sprint out a little bit and go, what the fuck is happening here? <laughs> what? I can't see anything, what's going on? Okay, the, the, the things that we're calling? You're not there yet. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Try to put the helmet on. <laughs> what am I shooting at? What am I doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Um, just, oh, again. <laughs> Get it. Okay. You hear another... <laughs> Air chilling, haunting vibration of some kind of throat bone, like a raptor that just kind of like calls out and I like, can't do the noise, but I would love to be able what to. The? Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, that's what you're hearing basically. <laughs> yeah. And then you start hearing more and more and more oh, up in the west, as like the pictures are starting to change and they know something is there. Things stop moving in the night. Calix runs in. Oh, okay, so there's there's one over on the other side. The teacher shooting at it. There's there's some over there. The the, the like big raptory thing. Lizard things. Why are we shooting? What the fuck happened? Mm -hmm. Was that you? No, I'm not. I'm not there. Oh, um, you're gone. I'm no, not. uh, base. Point out, you see TJ like thirty foot away from the camp, like yeah. on the edge of a um, on the edge of the gorge, like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> it was basically the idea of trying to scare them away. It didn't make it quite work. It doesn't seem like it's working, does it? No. Uh, shit. And uh, then we've got maybe more coming. Oh, casual will just kind of casually go. <clears throat> walk it and he will just walk west. Is there and more? If there's any trees around, I'll try and hide. So if they run past me, I can tap them behind. Stop check, please. Mm. Can I do the same, but like fly between the trees? Yeah, of course you can. Stop check. Packing down the tent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ida and TJ. Um, mm -hmm. Is it more than 60 feet away from me? This it is at the 60 foot mark. Okay, I'm going to be like, um, it's not even going to be clever. I'm like, see you later, alligator, before I get him. Um, right. And then I'm going to try and shoot him again. Um. 17. Hits. Nice. Five points of damage. Um, it takes the hit and then it starts like running backwards and forwards like in this 
20 foot maybe line, uh, trying to see if it can see like a rock to jump across or anything, but it can't see one at this, well, <laughs> sense one at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets hit by this laser bolt. Edo, what are you doing? Um, I'm fucked up, Mr. <laughs> Edo, I'm fucked up. <laughs> I'm gonna see TJ's trying to like mimic the call that we've heard before. Um, I'm just go over to TJ and be like, trust me. Yeah. I just put my arm on um, his uh, his <laughs> nose, TJ. That I forgot the word <laughs> for. Um, and you're just gonna feel this almost your voice box kind of just change and open up. Uh, you can almost mimic it perfectly for what you've heard. Nice. Um, so you are going to get a plus two on intimidation checks as you are getting a voice modulator. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna, it's, it, essentially, it's going to create, uh, allow her to change the pitch, timbre, and tone of her voice to easily intimidate um, and pronounce alien sounds or languages, disguising her voice. Nice. That is pretty perfect. I'm going to scream again. Yeah, not so yet. Not <laughs> as you then. What was your stuff check? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Eleven. Eleven. Uh, you. Oh. That gets the tree. Uh, four. Red. Oh, I have my sword out. Sword. Yeah, that's <laughs> ready. Yeah. As uh, I imagine you'd be like down by the side. Yeah, it's like, it's yeah. Kind of 40 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Um, as Bruce. Wow! <laughs> 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 up into the trees. Now, you, think you're, you both think you're pretty well hidden as you like wait above. Skeleton's starting to get the first of the 10 cities. Now, pretty much getting back into its box at this point. Uh, are you guys start working on the second one? No. Like everyone else, is, I'm going to like, is there a boulder or a. Yes, you like box the tent, uh, stick it in your backpack, and give me a perception check. Ooh, 15. 15. Yeah, you think you can get behind like some of the rocks or maybe some of the trees. You see that Roos has gone up and Cass has gone towards the side where you hear loads of these uh, noises where like he's then waiting for them to like come running past him. I want to lie down with my sniper rifle yeah? aimed at the, the tree. Line. Get, yeah. Okay, not a problem. Uh, give me a stealth check. Oh, yeah. um, 18. 18, cool. You seem pretty well hidden at this point. Kate, what are you doing? Um, I think I, seeing Skelkin, um, I'd like to sort of, because everyone's slightly paired off, so I'll be within an area range, like partway between these guys and Skelkin. I actually um, need to check something with that, because um, I don't... Have. I didn't put any um, cues in, yeah, mm -hmm. in this, um, and I can't remember how many Cassie would have had. I would have taken what she had. But... Yeah, uh, so I definitely fired off two last time, and you would have reloaded by that by this point anyway. Um, basically, it would have been like a set of long arms ammunition. We'll get that added in for you. Just remind me at the end of this, and we'll make sure that happens. Yeah, because I've definitely used more than two. So yeah, I wouldn't know how many you used at this point, but. Um, you will still have quite a few left. Um, what are you doing? Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to, seeing um, Bruce go up a tree, I probably would also climb up a tree and just get um, probably a magical arrow ready again as another spell. Okay. Just sitting up in a tree with it ready. Let me stop checking you want. Uh, 18. Okay. Um, this thing on the other side of the cliff is just like, it runs one side and it goes Wah! and then it goes to the other side Wah! and starts like calling out. That's probably the best I've ever done that noise. Oh, uh, yeah, really good. <laughs> I'm screaming. <laughs> and it's sort of like big, big, as loud as really, I can like, get it. See, like yeah. that T-Rex motherfucker. Yeah, before. just like into the, into the darkness. You're going to get a circumstance bonus to this, so plus two. Yep. Roll me that intimidate check. Okay. Do you get to add expertise to this? Not on the intimidate yet. Um, 19. Plus the 2 from the... That is the plus oh, 2. No, plus sorry, I was giving you a second experience for oh. things. Just plus 4. 21. Okay. Yay! It's enough. The DC is 20. <laughs> yes. As you bellow louder than you've ever bellowed. Like, what does the augmentation look like, Isa? So, you wouldn't really see it, because I kind of guess it's your, like, vocal cords on the inside, but all you feel is them kind of, just kind of, you're able to take more air in, you're able to feel them sort of stretch yeah, so out. I feel like the diaphragm really engaged. Yeah, and... we see, like, magical, like, threads become 
almost nanites at this point as they <laughs> stretch. Ooh, like a, like a, you, like a, they kind of make the diaphragm up into the um, mm -hmm. the airway system. Like yeah, it's, that's it's the like visual a, that we like see. Like a holographic kind of soft palette and everything. Mm -hmm. It's then like we're watching the camera come out of your, like you see like yeah. a hamster teeth, and then it just, just <laughs> and this thing. Dun, dun. And it like starts like calling rapidly. You then the rest of you start hearing other ones in different pictures again. As they the, the sounds of footsteps are getting close, like the running, like the trampling of beasts or animals or something. They slow down. You hear skids. You hear halts. A couple of calls, more responses. In this moment, what are you doing? I'd, I'd like to say I'm probably deafened at this point, being so close. <laughs> I'm going to mark it off. I'm probably deafened by the fact that I've just got so close to TJ. That's April. up to you, if you want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Can I attune? Uh, or is it? No. Technically not in combat at this moment, but... Have they gone past me yet? No, they, they seem to have stopped moving. This thing has called out that you just roared at. Mm. It's then responded like some kind of bigger predator is nearby. Ugh. You have a moment you think six seconds to make a choice. What are you doing? I think I would like to change my sword into my mighty vocal graph, and then I want to add to TJ's. Mm. Give me an intimidate check. Mm. Tech bros become the raw boys. What? <laughs> <laughs> raw dog in it. Absolutely raw dog in it. 21. Exact same role. So, hey. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is this is what's going to be interesting. Is you roar out, this thing is like it can sense that you're not this thing, but then it hears this thing, calls out like, oh wait, hang on a minute, to the rest of the pack. Then another roar happens, and it kind of just boom, and then runs into the tree like that skittering way, and you hear the other ones begin to like high pitch trilling as they then start disappearing off into the night, thinking that maybe there are two larger predators here that they don't want to mess with. The rest of the night is unimpeded. Yeah. Oh. Who is next on... Oh, so you're doing the four hours. Oh, uh, yeah. To four hours off your environmental protection. Yeah. That was going to turn into a pretty nasty combat. That <laughs> didn't happen, by the way. I didn't know if you were going to run, if you were going to stay. I was like, oh, OK, they're on the other side of the river, so they can't get you, but... They can call for others. Um, who's going back to sleep? Are you staying here? You're moving? What are you doing? I think we've probably. That was the last watch, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. That was yeah, last we've, watch. we've got. Yeah, one more. Three bodies. Yeah, yeah. Me and you, you next were the last one. Wait, sorry, who went, who, wait, who went first? It was you two, then it was you two. And then us two. Okay, so that's only watches. six hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eight hours total. Yeah. I thought we were doing three watches, as in that would have divided. I, I can just take the last one. It's one. Oh, Mr. Eda, do you feel rested? Hmm? Go back to sleep. Otherwise, <laughs> somebody's not getting six hours, which yeah. would be you. Um, I can take it solo if people want to. I can rest. Yeah. Rusi, yay! As long as you're getting. Well, hang on a minute. We don't know how, not, how far into the last watch it was. Mm. So it was uh, during the uh, third watch that that happened. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so realistically, you'll need six hours and then two hours downtime. So at this point, uh, you've had your four, so that's mm -hmm. all you need. Yeah. Uh, two hours done, so the rest of you are about four hours sleep. So you're still needing another two hours sleep and then two hours of like maybe breakfast and doing shit like that. Go to bed, everybody. Thanks for staying here. Yeah. I think we've probably set up an, a... I think they probably won't come back. Mm. They know the nurses are here. Out comes the fucking tent. Yeah, you reset back up the tent. Um, yep. But Good basically, I just need to know who's marking off the last amount of environmental it's, there thing. I can, cool. Am I doing it Have you had enough sleep? No. no <laughs> it's I'll you. Just, I'll just cool. So yeah. you take that four hours me off. Me and Roy. Roy and me. Everybody can now mark a long rest. Yeah. Hit points to start going back up again now, which is quite nice. As we move into day eight. Good morning. That's not gone up enough. <laughs> no, you only got one per level. Yeah. Fuck me. That's why the uh, entropic devourer is bad. Yeah. Because it siphons hit points off you while you're asleep. So very bad. Yep. But that's what things like yeah. healing serums and Mr. Cures are for. And... We don't come across those. When was the last time we went to a shop? <laughs> Eight days ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have your... Yeah, you still got given some. But... Day eight, who's rolling that D20 for me? 
That's pretty cool. Eight. Eight. Good morning. <laughs> Time to die. <laughs> it really is. Uh, D8, please. Uh, it's, 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 for me personally. It's just here in the room. Yeah. Okay. Right, that's fine. Um, so I need to have this Twitch now it's a different uh, control. Um, yeah. Your day is uninterrupted and you're starting to feel now that you're actually starting to gain some elevation in the ground. And as you traverse the day, you see like beautiful creatures that are simple insects that are bright colors right the way through to avian type creatures. You see plants that aren't carnivorous that seem to move like they're living you find an area of river where there's these silken prayers draped into it maybe in like a small pool where it's uh, channeling before it goes down into another section and yeah you actually have like a really great day and uh, is anyone chancing no environmentals or are you keeping environmentals on I'm, I'm fine does anyone need any curing of their HP I mean, I'm only missing like, a little bit. Of time. Did you say a long rest earlier or a short rest? Long rest. Long long rest. Just I am not chancing it. No. No? Not now. I mean, is it free for you or does it cost you? It'll cost me, but it's not that much. Okay. Obviously, anybody who was fatigued and got a long rest, you then mm-hmm. can take off the fatigue condition. You would probably not be deafened by now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Miss Dana. I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Dudes, my dudes, that was so cool. And the thing, you did the thing, and my voice was brought and you did it, Cass, and it was just like, oh, ah! It was really cool. Baller. It's glad it fucking worked. Yeah. Wish we'd thought of that earlier in the journey. Well, it was a good one I tell you. Yeah, keep that in the bank for next time. Yeah, yeah it's, a, mm-hmm. it's a handy dandy little mm-hmm. c- c- combo. C- 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 combo. <laughs> Can you change our outfits into a massive Stegosaurus costume? No, that might be a bit expensive. What if we all, like, you know, get on the shoulders and we can... Like a powering (laughs) resort. Transformers. Like a Trojan horse. (laughs) Five Stegosaurus in a coat. (laughs) Wow, of course. As you guys move into night time and the violin the lemon <laughs> stuff all begins to light up, it's never not going to be funny for me. No. Uh, are you guys pushing through? It could be a bit fucking nice, right? Yeah. Yeah. You were starting to feel like you're travelling up. I think I the elevation is starting to rise. Does it feel armor. like we're getting near to the end of the forest? Like, is it slightly cool? Is the fauna changing? Flora changing? The fauna and flora changes all of the time. That's okay. the problem with this place, is that it is constantly, it's almost like it's always moving. Yeah. I'm having to push on. Yeah, I yeah. think we'll I just need to change, change my armor. Yeah. But yeah. You need to change your armor, yeah? yeah? Did you get your full 12 out of that, or did you run out part way through? I got my full 12. I've got some left Perfect. on it as a backup. Okay, so switching your armor out, make sure you, that's done, please. Yes. And then, so you decide to push through the night, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I would like some fatigue, uh, fatigue, some, uh, fatigue save, so some fortitude saving proof, please. Just taking my first. Mm-hmm. I don't know which one that is. 18 plus. Mm. 21. 21 for Ida, pass. 19. Pass. Oh my god. Pass. Mm. You can mark the petite condition on your sheet, please. Uh, conditions in the top right are quick, and then you go down and tick on the petite. I also need to mark off uh, the last few of my hours. Uh, Bruce. Uh, 11. Really can you mark petite, please? Also 11. Oh. So. Can you mark petite, please? As you guys start to push through the night. Mm. Ooh, oh, as we start rising through the night, I think it's about time I rolled one. I'm gonna oh. have to roll for my, um... Are you out of environmental hours as well? I'm not out, out, I don't want to be out, so... Um... Okay, could you roll for me please, once you get, so, have you got fatigued on already? Yeah. Okay. If you fail this, you will go to exhausted. 
just so you are aware of what is what the I'm going to have to roll. I won't make it through the night, so. Okay. I'm going to have to do it. Perfect. Could you roll one, please? Your save will have changed now that you're fatigued. First one. Remember, I can like tap you. What is this fortitude again? Yes, Mm. but it will have changed now that you're fatigued. I I don't understand. So the other thing you said it would have changed. It might not have done. It might still be a plus six. Twenty-one. You pass. (laughs) Heat's not the problem, but you are getting tired. That number, please. Thirteen, I think it is. <laughs> Thirteen, you say? Mm-hmm. It just, I've got a chance of getting something cool here. No. Uh-oh. That's cool. Oh, keys, your man. Is it cool? Why me what worms then is the coolest? It's Jimmy Two Fingers. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like six. Jimmy Two Fingers. I'm, with the I'm now missing. diving through my dice bag. For dice. And if you like dice, you should definitely check out Ian's dice at www.dragonwardindustries.com. Two? Two. 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 Oh. But if you don't like dice, he sells other merch. Like, like. Like quality merch, like, like. Shorts. <laughs> there we go. Then you can and get dinosaur, 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 black Jones shirts. We've got mugs. Okay. There's all sorts of cool shit. This is on you guys now. Who wants to roll a d12? Go on. Yeah, go on. Go on. This could be something fucking amazing, or it could be something Jesus. horrific. We all get it. I feel like your version no. of Amazing is horrific. What is it? No. It's a nine. Nine? <laughs> nine. It isn't. Let's go through. <laughs> Let's go through the list here. No. One. Okay. No. Be something great for you. No. Two is what I want. Mm. Three. It's fine. Four's cool. Four's very cool. Dang. Five. It's pretty fun. Six. It's pretty bad. Seven, you're done. So it would be nothing. Oh, end of forest. Eight. I like it. Nine. Ghostly fog starts oh, to roll in no. as you rise. Oh, what oh you must think God. is the foot of the mountain. Creeping silently through this dense jungle, it moves with an eerie, almost sentient fluidity. Weaving between the towering trees and swallowing the vibrant foliage in its path. The fog is dense and heavy. A milky white veil that obscures everything more than a few feet away from you, rendering the once familiar terrain into an alien and disorientating landscape. Navigation becomes impossible. Landmarks vanish into the opaque whiteness and the sense of direction falters. The jungle usually so alive with colour and movement at night time, feels suspended in a surreal, dreamlike state. All that remains is this oppressive, impe- uh, impenetrable frog. Frog? <laughs> impenetrable frog. <laughs> I'll take the impenetrable frog. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's coming near my virility. <laughs> a silent guardian that halts all travel and leaves you stranded in its spe- spectral embrace, you lose a day. Oh, oh my god. Oh. That's like the worst one. So, this is happening at the start of the night. You could... Well, you are pushing through, to be honest, and you said that and you've already made your checks. Yeah. But as morning breaks and the fog begins to clear, you haven't made any progress. You've maybe done a couple of circles. Like, we have to stop. We have to wait for this to clear. God damn it. At the start of a new day... Oh, can we take a rest? Hmm? Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Would Roy tell us where to go? Like, oh, Roy's it? constantly tugging. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you were using that as like a... So this is the other problem is mm. Roy does point in a direction. You're like, okay, yeah, cool. This is probably why you think you can keep me in for it. And then you probably get to... as the crow flies. As the crow yeah. flies, yeah. what you learn. As it gets to a big rock. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, okay, we'll go around this. And, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. And then you get to a river. Yeah. And then you're yeah. like part of the river and you're like, ah, but I need to cross this bit, mm. but I can't. Yeah. It's just saying that way. It's not Roy's fault. It doesn't have eyes. And that's where you then start losing your sense of direction and everything. Um, 
but the fog clears in the morning, you're all tired. Mm-hmm. As in, like, we couldn't move and set up camp. You could set up camp, yeah, for sure. But, I mean, you tried to push through, which is part of, like, me then getting you to roll and get an encounter. And then you spent hours trying to navigate, maybe following Roy, and then realising that you can't. You eventually set up camp, and nobody gets, like, a proper rest. You find, like, rocky areas that you can't really bed down on. Mm-hmm. And then day breaks, and the fog starts to disperse. And we're now on day nine. Are you guys wanting to carry on for now? Are you wanting to bed down during the day? No. Are you wanting to... You want to push again? Push no, like, I want to sleep. I want right. to sleep as well, because the fatigue is going to start taking me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So. All right. We're After yeah. a rough oh. night, you set up camp. It was so funny. Yep. James. Yes. Roll a D20 for me, please. 16. 16. Probably six for me, please. Three. Three. Roll a d12 for me, please. Yes. Oh. Give me the pin second. Oh, I need all micro dice. Seven. Someone's got 20, 20. Because you've already had this encounter, you will have a clear day. Oh. So. So we get a little rest. <laughs> you can set up camp. I'm not going to worry too much about uh, watchers as long as you all mark up for you. It's four hours in particular. Yep. Then everybody else is another two hours mm-hmm. off the environments while they're on watch, unless they want to chance it. Nah. Okay. I'm good to. Obviously, you can just tap yourself or somebody yeah. else. Um, but if you've got two hours, you have to spend the two hours unless you want to chance it. Can we take the fatigue door off once we've done a long Once you've rest? had a long rest, yes. Yeah. I mean, do we all have to watch? Uh, no. You don't have to. Um, some of you can stay in the tents because, I mean, TJ can do four hours on their own. But who else? Who's covering the, the other four hours? Yeah? Mm-hmm. All four of them? Or just two of them? Probably just the two. Just mark two. Off, two. Yeah, so as long as you guys mark off the two, the rest of you don't need to mark anything else oh. off. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And night time comes once more to the living dream. You're starting to see that as you're rising up, the canopy is starting to become more sporadic. You are getting more vision of the Koshorian sky above you, which means that you must be coming towards the end of this jungle. How far that is, you're not sure. Every now and again, you get, like, maybe the glimpse of elevated rock somewhere a few miles ahead, maybe a day, maybe less than that, and you'll be climbing Mount Allure. It comes to night time. Do you guys start moving now, or do you stay put? Keep going. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just keep our eyes out. Yep. Night time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who wants it? No. <laughs> Jack's gonna roll that d20. Fourteen. D6, please. <laughs> Fuck that, isn't it? One. Who knows? Teleport. Do you know all of these offers? So many lists. <laughs> Went snake with it all the way back down to the one. The one. Uh, one, you say? Mm. Oh! Two shreds, you say. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally watched that episode the other day. <laughs> A new asshole you <laughs> make <laughs> of. Mm. You find yourselves at the, beginning, at the beginning of this night travel having to hack down vines and really work to get yourself through this last area of dense jungle. Yet, midnight, as you think, you know, how hard is this? You hack into a a clearing. You can see that many trees here have been felled already. What you first think is, must be the environment, until you find the heavily decaying corpse of a large reptilian. Mm-hmm. About 60 foot in front of you. Perception checks, please, from everyone. Um, I did my... Oh. 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 You're fine. Oh, that's cock. That is cock. Can uh, you say that's cock? Oh, mm-hmm. man, I'm not the person to you ask. Can you rest the I don't care um, if it's cock for me, so... I... No, no, the name is cock. Um... Fifteen. <laughs> uh, that is uh, sixteen. So, uh, Ida. Fifteen. Fifteen. Twelve. EJ. Thirty-two. Cal- <laughs> Cal- 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 Fifteen. 
16. And Bruce and... 23, 21. 21, because this will be sight-based. You see this large reptilian... I mean, it was pretty big. You can tell. And even, like, in, you can smell the rot. You can smell that it's been picked out for a while by something. But the vibrant chaos of flora and fauna of this jungle gives way to a sinister scene. The iridescent leaves of towering trees cast shimmering shadows on the ground. The air is thick with an unsettling quiet, broken only by the occasional buzz and laughter of alien creatures in the distance. <laughs> in the center of this small clearing lies this lifeless body of this massive reptilian creature. Its scaly hide glistens with hues of pink and red, and around the carcass, groups of fairies flutter oh. with dark intent. Ooh. For a moment you watch, maybe these fairies are performing some sort of ceremony or beautiful prayer to this fallen beast, but no. Ritual. You quickly come to see that this is not the case. These fairies have a macabre appearance. Their wings are tattered and translucent. Their eyes glow with a sinister red light. And their tiny hands grip rusted, jagged pliers. With a disturbing mix of precision and glee, these tooth fairies work methodically, oh. yanking teeth from the reptilian's maw. Each extracted tooth emits a sickening crunch, mm. followed by a twisted giggle <laughs> from the fairies. The extracted teeth, glowing faintly with an airy bioluminescence, are collected in small, blood stained satchels that hang off their waists. How big are they? Maybe less than a foot. Oh, they're tiny. They are tiny. As you stand there watching, one of you steps on a branch that makes a loud and audible crack. And these horrific fairies with some long from some long forgotten nightmare <laughs> stop laughing. Zip and will turn in your direction. Oh. Covering oh. mouth. <laughs> How easy would that be for the guts and teeth to just... <laughs> They're essentially like tiny oh. little creatures that look like that. Oh. Kill them. Kill them. They're oh, little types. It's giving me gremlins. With fairy like wings. It's giving me but Gorn's Pixie. You guys... I sleek Gorn's Gorn's Pixie. I, um, I really like this yeah. one with its like pliers and stuff like that as well. <laughs> Go and get your teeth. Um, <laughs> There's so many mini behind here, it's unreal. Uh, but we're going to pick up that one next week where we see what happens with this Tooth Fairy encounter. Uh, the true stuff of nightmares here in the living dream. Uh, yeah, I mean, well done, guys. You are nearing the end of the jungle and the start of Mount Alert. Oh. Oh. It has if been... I get killed by Tooth Fairy, I'm not forgiving anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, Thank you so much to our sponsors, to our supporters. Thank you so much to people watching on Twitch. Thank you to people on YouTube. Obviously, uh, use uh, on Twitch the Prime subs, which James mentioned earlier. Yep. If you're on YouTube, like and subscribe. If you're on the podcast, keep downloading. Uh, numbers are looking really good right now, and it's really exciting to see that um, we're being listened to at like, a, at like it's not like intermittently. It's crazy that somebody's taking it in. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah, being watched on the podcast. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> it means the world to us. We've got a live show in a few weeks. Uh, we've got more news coming your way. We've got more stuff coming out soon, um, which I can't really talk about at this point. Top secret. Yeah, it really is. Uh, but apart from that, we'll be back next week. Um, thank you so much, guys. You fucking rock. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Oh, from no, guys. we're being more giving. No. no. Guys, may those, may those dice, may those dice be ever in your favour. God, I cannot talk. I should not have given you the book tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you all next week. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.